Morning. Now, if you're in the Midlands area, could you let us know what the weather's like? We're kind of boarded in here, and um, Hannah's arrived wearing a lovely summer frock, and uh, Christopher's got his shorts and his T-shirt on. Michael hasn't got his coat and his gloves on today. He's got his scarf on still. That's his summer outfit. And Tom and I are just like normal. But apparently it's going to rain. And then my friend Linda is on the way to the airport, Birmingham airport, and she's it's thundering and lightning. So if anybody could enlighten me, as the, as the show goes on, what the, what the weather is like in the Midlands, I'd be very grateful. Um, anyway, let's look at today's menu. Here it is. Here it is. Coming up today with me, John Scott. Uh, William Morris and Quilting Fabrics at 8 o'clock. 9 o'clock is Quintessential Quilting Kits. Now, uh, it's a bit different today because it's me for two hours. I know, sorry about that. Then uh, Claire Louise joins us at 10 o'clock uh, for two hours. With Now, what we've, we've done is we've mixed 10 and 11 together. So the Claire Louise Roundup is actually for two hours, including Claire Louise's top tools. Um, so you'll see that as we go along. Uh, so that is the menu for today. So please stay with us on this Saturday morning. Uh, now, we'd love you to get in touch. Uh, especially during, during the Claire Louise hour, we'd love you to get your questions in. Uh, so uh, the way to, best way to do that is a web chat. So if you go to our website, www.sightandquarter.com, click on Watch Today's Show. Then as you see, as you go down the screen, there's a little box there that says Message to Studio. You can write your message there. Uh, keep it brief because after 140 characters, it, it, at our end, it uh, cuts you off. But at your end, you can carry on typing. Uh, and then just send that through anything you want to mention. While we're on that page, we just, yeah, yeah. If we just scroll down the page, You'll see products from today's show. They are all the uh, products from yesterday's show in a second. Now, look, I didn't know there were any Beatrice patterns left. If you want that Beatrice pattern, you must get it. It's fantastic. Um, so there's the bundles from the, um, what's that thing called that you put your blocks in? Your block book and everything. And there's the, the quilters you go through. Anyway, in a minute, in a minute, all of those will disappear and all of today's uh, products will arrive. So if you're watching the show later, you can think, oh, what's John had today? If it hasn't sold out, it will be there. Talking about selling out, you do need to check out. If you know you want it, please, please, please check out. You can either check out from the screen below or at the top of the screen there where Hannah just clicked on it. Remember, you can uh, uh, check out as many times as you like during the day. It's one P and P of two pounds and ninety-five pence. That's the standard delivery, four to six working days. But as I say, you can check out. So if you buy something in the first hour, then see something in the second hour, then something in the third hour that you like, you can um, check out as often as you like. You'll only be charged one P and P in twenty-four hours. You can also email us. Studio at certainquarter.com. Studio at certainquarter.com. If you want to get your pictures in or if you want to send us a longer email. Now, I do need to go back to the website because you know um, data protection, all that sort of thing. Um, my vet's already done it and my financial people have done it and someone else has done it, right? So I've, I've done it three times already and here, there's this new data protection thing coming in at the end of May, beginning of June, where if you're on a mailing list, they will, can no longer just send you emails, you have to re-register or, or sign a form saying, yes, I agree to. At the vets, it said, yes, I agree for them to carry on. But here, what you have to do is re-sign in. So what you need to do is go to the front page of the website and then the box of the box, of, there you go, there you go. So it says, click on the blue bear box. And there you go, you just, now, now, if you carry on, scroll down a bit further, because on my computer, oh, you see on my computer, it's a bit different. Fill in your name, fill in your email address. That's all you have to do. It literally takes a minute. On my computer, right, the submit button wasn't that high up, right? And I'm like, well, how am I supposed to submit it? It was only by scrolling further down the page that I find the submit bot button. Also, we had some people um, having issues yesterday doing it on their iPad. So if you can do it on your computer, that would be brilliant. Literally take seconds. And then it means after the end of May, beginning of June, we can still send you... Um, promos, competition ideas, um, when we're having a spend and save day, when we're having a special day or anything like that. Otherwise, if you don't read, if you, I can't make you do it, right? I cannot make you do it. No, no, I'm not allowed to. Not allowed to force you to do it, but it's your choice to do it. But if you don't do it, after the end of May, you won't get any emails from us. So in some ways, I'm going to use it to my benefit because there are some people I think, oh, I should have unsubscribed from this list. OK, Hannah's got over uh, 19,000 unopened emails. She has, she's just trying to prove how popular she is. They're all, it's all spam. It's all like spending 40, 40 pounds at Wallace or whatever. 
Anyway, at All Russian Bride, she's saying. Uh, I think that's it, isn't it? Is that it? So I'd better go. I'm going to start with William Morris. I'm sure, I was going to, I'm sure there was something else I had to say in that opening gambit there. Oh, oh, there is, there is, there is. New buyers, new buyers. If you spend £10 or over today, or any day at the moment, on your first purchase, not including your post and packaging, you know, sometimes we've given scissors, cutting board. The present now is fantastic. You don't have to do anything, or you will automatically get two metres of randomly selected fabric with your first order over £10. Uh, it's if you're a new buyer, and if you spend £10 or more, not including your post and packaging. I knew there was something else, actually. Right, 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 right. Oh, you say what? I was so jealous when Natasha had this new range of William Morris fabrics the other day. Now... I'm just going to explain what I'm going to do. I've got it in a mega bundle. Uh, for those of you who are new to us, a mega bundle is where we say you can have half a metre of all the fabrics we have from this range and buy it like that in one, in one mega a bundle. You might not want that. You might want uh, half a metre of different fabrics. You might want three metres of one of the fabrics. You can do a little bit of home furnishing or something. So, to start with, this here... And now, uh, is, do you want me to move it, Michael, or is it already where it is? This is our mega bundle of the brand new... Oh, let me move that out of the way, though. It's the Merton range. Isn't it beautiful? Look at this. Now, each of them... You get half a metre of each of them for £143.49. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, it's a considered purchase, John, for a Saturday morning. But if you think of what you're getting, nine metres... Gorgeous Morris & Co. Merton Range Fabric Mega Bundle. Right? Nine metres, you get there. Half a metre, 18 different, uh, 18 different designs all together in one Mega Bundle. So if you just start over here, I'm not going to go through them all individually. I'm just going to show you them um, because I, I will be going through them in a minute, but I'm going to uh, individually, but I just want you to see the Mega Bundle. These are called Chrysanthemum. Beautiful, aren't they? Uh, red, Aqua and Taupe. Beautiful, aren't they? Then we just move along to the next one. You get, you get all of these. You have to remember these. You get all of these in your, in your uh, bundle. This one's called Chrysanthemum Toile. Uh, red, aqua, and taupe again. Beautiful. Gorgeous, aren't they? I'll go through more about it later on. Then I've got this one. This one's called Snake's Head. Now, this one's slightly different. This one's called Sage, aqua, and taupe. So, for some reason, that one's called Sage, aqua, and taupe there. Beautiful though, aren't they? Then if I move, can I move to this one here? This one's, this one's called Florets. Aren't they lovely? Now this is red, aqua, and this one's called taupe here. I'll go through all these later. You get all of these in the Mega Bundle. Then I move on to this one, which is called Willow something. That's it, Will Willow Burrows, right? And in this one, we have red, aqua, and black. Red, aqua, and black we have in that one. And then last but not least, trellis. I love this. This was one of his most popular wallpapers. Do you know these were wallpaper patterns originally? Um, this is called trellis. A gilt trellis. Well, it's called gilt trellis, I think, because it's got that, on the original, it's like a sheeny shine in there. So on this one, you get... Oh, now I've got to remember this one. Aqua. Are they in the wrong order? Yeah, that's my... No, no, that's fine. So I've got aqua, taupe. And so this is aqua, that's taupe, and this one's sage. There we go. There we go. Bri aren't they lovely? I, lo I love all three of those. Right, OK, so that is your Mega Bundle for £143.49. I will be showing all of those to you in a second by the half metre. But what I want to show you is some tonal bundles that we've done that we think will go beautifully with this. If you were thinking of doing um, a quilt and maybe you bought the Mega Bundle and you want some blenders to go with it, or maybe you're thinking, oh, I know I'm just going to choose the red ones out of there or whatever. Then, uh, when John does them in... I'm talking about me in the third person. Who am I, John? Um, anyway... <laughs> Right, Bijou is, is our newest staple range, core range. We'll have it all the time. Remember we had the Titans? They were just while they lasted. Bijou are like our spot-ons, our spectrum solids, our linear print, our linen effect. They're going to be in our core range forever. Uh, sometimes they, they sell out very, very quickly and we have to wait for them to come back in. But um, 
they will, they will always come back in. They'll be like, if they miss out, then you'll, they'll always come back in. It won't be like, oh, miss it or miss out or anything like that. So, oh, she wants to start with the most difficult one to get to. I thought that, here we go, sorry. Right, okay. What you get is you get six different fabrics at half a metre of each. You get a total of three metres. Let me just pick this back up now. So now what you get in here is you've got arrow evergreen, you've got pennant asparagus, you've got pennant eucalyptus, you've got petal vetiver, you've got pyramid water mint, and you've got V fatigue. Or, do what, sorry? You're very fatigued. Hannah, she can't stop uh, yawning today. She's not tired, she said. That's why she's yawned all morning. Anyway, aren't they lovely? Aren't they gorgeous, those greens in there? What I'll do later is I will mix and match or any that you want to see with any of the William Morris fabrics, just let me know. There they all are. So there's uh, Arrow Evergreen. You've got uh, Pennant Asparagus. You've got Pennant Eucalyptus. So that must be that one and that one. I'll put them in the right order. There you go. So that's, that's um, that one there was the Arrow Evergreen. This was, I'm presuming that one's asparagus, that one's eucalyptus. Then I've got Petal Vetiver. I've got uh, Pyramid Water Mint, which you'll think is that one. And then you've got V Fatigue. Oh, so you've got to make your mind up. Which one's Vetiver Petal and which one's V Fatigue? Look. Lovely, aren't they? Beautiful tones. So I kind of sage, look at them there, they look lovely together. Olives and sages and peppermints, I'm thinking there. Oh, and asparagus, mustn't miss out asparagus, must I? So three metres for £29 and £49. When I, when I worked in South Africa, we, um, one of the farms up the road was an asparagus farm, so we always got supplied fresh, fresh asparagus. And they do this amazing... Um, I can't remember how to do it now, but what, you used to, what we used to do is we used to put butter in a pan and let it get the butter get... Oh, which way around was it? Yeah, put the butter in the pan, let the butter get really, really hot and boil, and then you pour vinegar. It sounds horrible. You pour vinegar into the boiling butter. It would make this incredible. And then they'd drizzle it all over the um, asparagus. It was delicious. I've tried it since I got home. It doesn't work, but anyway. I, but we did it with Marge and I, because I, we all, we, they built us little rondavels, little mud huts while we were there. We lived in these uh, posh mud huts. But, um, uh, and Marge, Marge, my friend Marge, who's head of finance for the, the, the Warner Brothers, used to come over and we'd make this asparagus dish, but I can't do it anymore. Anyway, moving on. The blue one now. This one's called Ocean. This one is called Ocean. Lovely colours. None of them are vibrant, are they? All lovely blending. So you've got arrow uh, in dusty sky, which I'm presuming is that one. You've got uh, clover in deep teal, which I'm pres Oh, must be that one. No. Oh, that one. I, I went with that one first of all, but I didn't think they looked like clover. Oh, this one. That's not the top one, then, is it? Um, then I've got Petal Carolina. You see, Carolina's not a colour to me, you see, so I don't know which one that one is. This one, the one with flowers on it. That's got flowers on it, that one. Right? OK, well, it doesn't matter, you get all of them. Um, Pyramid uh, Prussian, that'll be that one. That's Pyramid Prussian. Then you've got Sol Wintergreen and Square. Okay, that one. Okay, so that one there is the Square Dot Celeste. So this one's Wintergreen. There you go. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but the pictures we looked at earlier look a bit different. They're gorgeous, but they are tiny prints. Look, they are tiny, tiny, tiny prints. I forgot to do my nail oil today. 29 pounds and 49 pence. Oh, that's what's confused me. Because some of them have got different patterns in them. I, th I only looked at a couple of the bundles, you see. You see, oh, you'll see in a minute, you'll see in a minute. They've got different patterns within the different colours. So they're all the blue ones you're going to get. Okay, 
So then I've got two other. I've got blush and I've got berry. Oh, I'll tell you in the next hour. Uh, Christopher's made something for the next hour, just so you know. Uh, which one do you want to go to? Blush. This is nice. Now, this is the one I looked at. You see, this one's got a different pattern in it, hasn't it? Because it's got, like, the cherry passion in them. So in this one, you get peachy arrow, which will be that one. You get bouquet crimson, which is that one. Then you've got clover cotton candy, which I'm presuming is that one. Then you've got penance in grapefruit, which I know that that one is. Then you've got petal Sedona, and you've got pyramids in uh, sweet potato. Oh, oh, I wish they wouldn't talk about food. I'm starving this morning. I've already... Oh, oh, is that what smells in the office? Yes, Hannah made a sweet potato dal last night. I thought dal had lentils in it. Oh, okay. Oh, sweet potato, red lentils and cauliflower. I've just said don't talk about food and she's reeling it all off. And have you brought some with you? Oh, okay then. Oh, she's presuming I'm giving her a lift home. Did you hear that? You could just drop in on the way home, she said. <laughs> no, but that's fine. 29 pounds and 49 pence for your three meters. Lovely. That's just three of them you see in there. They are Ginger Mike's favourite. In fact, this whole bundle could be called Ginger Mike, couldn't it? Because that's what he dresses in and his complexion is. Well, we, can't, we haven't seen your T-shirt yet because you haven't taken your coat off yet, have you? Anyway, that's the, that's the blush. Oh, put your clothes back on, Michael. Poor old Hannah. He's taking his clothes off to show Hannah upstairs. Hannah's my producer, if you're new to me, by the way. Right, and then this one, this is my favourite one. This is very, very nice. If little Paul was here, again, that's very nice, isn't it, John? Uh, you get bloom in heather. You get bloom in masala. That, they're, the, they're the two blooms there, the masala and bloom. Then you got bouquet lilac. Then you've got Sol Raisin, then you've got Square Dot in Rose, and then you've got V Cherry. They're lovely, aren't they? Gorgeous colours. It's my favourite, that one. £29.49. pence. There's just those three again. £29.49. pence. Aren't they lovely? There's the other three. They're so touchy, aren't they, these boys that work here? I don't mean touchy-feely. I mean touchy as in, oh, all right, then, all right, then. I'll try and show them. Right. Am I going over there next, or am I doing these next? Right, I'm going to do these by the half metre now, so I'll just put that over there. Oh, yes, of course it is. I'm getting very confused. <laughs> I go over to an empty table. I'm not moving in this. I do apologise. Right, so let's start with... Oh, chrysanthemum. These are gorgeous. Now, uh, remember William Morris, uh, when he used to draw, he always drew... He didn't want it to look three-dimensional to start with, so he always used to draw it so it looked flat and then would just throw in one extra set of lines just to create that 3D... See, look at those. See, they're completely two-dimensional there. And then they'd throw in a couple of lines just to give you... So it almost looked like relief, didn't it? So now this comes in three different colourways. We've got red, we've got aqua, and we've got taupe. Start with taupe as it's on the top. Now, this is half a metre. This is what you're going to get for your 7 99 It's 100% cotton. It's 44 inches... Oh, it's beautiful. 44 inches wide. You see, the thing is, these fabrics, I know that if you get the Mega Bundle, they work so brilliantly together. But if you just wanted um, one fabric, one statement piece, one chair, one cushion, one, you know, just one thing like that, or... Well, 
it's really weird because I was in the I, near me, and as you leave my village and go through to the next, not coming this way, going that way, not that, that matters. There's a barn, you know, like a, it's a barn that sells all antiques, great big old barn. You can go and buy. And next to it, there's a little designer shop, and I noticed they didn't have this fabric, but they had some. They had some um, William Morris esque fabrics. Uh, made into cushions, right? Now, yes, you've got your cushion pad in it, but they were over £30. Oh, no, if you go to some of the London stores, you'll pay even more. Hannah's seen a lampshade made out of um, William Morris-esque fabric, and how much was it? £40. Oh, Sandra says, uh, near Dudley, it's gorgeous and sunny. My daughter's got pink hair. I remember you. They came to. I saw them. I saw them at um, so for pleasure. So it's lovely and sunny. Lorraine says, "Morning, love." William Morris can't wait for my parcel. To, oh, William. No, I've got that completely wrong. There's no punctuation. Morning, not morning, love. Morning, love. William Morris can't wait for my parcel to add to my previous orders. Love, Lorraine. Thank you, Lorraine. It's beautiful, isn't it? Just gorgeous. So that's the taupe. That's the taupe one. I love, I, oh, they're just so, oh, anyway. So then that's taupe. So then I'll go to aqua, shall I? Or shall I go to red? Aqua next. It's exactly the same pattern, exactly the same pattern. Half a metre, 44 inches wide. Beautiful, isn't it? Now, that one, you see, uh, the taupe, I love the taupe. This one introduces more colour, doesn't it? The aqua has swathes of the blue going through the fabric. And then your background on this one is a chocolate brown. And then you've got that lovely kind of ecru flowers there. Uh, the, the minute people see this, they know it's William Morris, don't they? The minute you see it, it's so William. All of these, all of these fabrics today, apart, apart from, apart from the florets, which I think is a modern take, because if you look on the centre of these flowers, I'll just show you. So you see, you see how you've got the florets in the middle there. I'll come to it in a minute, but look. This is the floret fabric here, which they've taken from the center of those flowers. So I think maybe William Morris himself didn't design this. I think this one might be, because I've... I, these people had exclusive access to the archive. So maybe, maybe he had done a little side drawing of that. I just can't see that as a William Morris print, you know, when he was around. Just think it's beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, because I think, yes, because also, if you look at the background, the leaves in the background, you see, and it's all about scale, isn't it? Because when you do quilting, you want different scales, don't you? Won't be, well, no, because he did it as wallpaper, you see. He, he designed all these as wallpaper. Beautiful, though, aren't they? Gorgeous. Right, that one there is the aqua. Now I've got it in the red for those who love your vibrant, vi well, I say vibrant, but it's a solid, a solid red, isn't it? It's like what we call a Christmas red. Oh, Hannah, Hannah's saying one day she'll have William Morris wallpaper in her house, in, a, in her grown-up house, not a pretend house. Now, did I tell you, when I worked at York Theatre Royal, there was one cupboard, great big wooden cupboard fitted, because we were in an old, really old building. And when you opened it, it was all wallpapered inside with original William Morris wallpaper. I know. OK, Hannah, well, no, I don't think this is weird. Maybe you knew him in a past life, Hannah. Hannah's saying, when she was, even when she was a child, she didn't know, who, to start with, she didn't know who William Morris was, but she wanted, when she saw William Morris Prince, she wanted the William Morris Prince so badly, when she was eight. Anyway. And then she used to get the book, she, she used to get books, she didn't get, she didn't used to get bar bar books, she used to get William Morris books. So in 99, this one, look at the deep. So this one here, you've got the same aqua colour in there. You've got like a, a, a almost more going to a corally ecru there. And then the dark red in the background. Now, you see, what I love about this is when you see the red Willow Burrows print itself, it's the other way around. Look, it's a darker. So when you mix this and this, 
You say, look at that, look at, isn't that beautiful? If you mix that one and that one, same print, but bigger on here. But look, they've done it the, the other way around. It's got a darker leaf and a paler background. <sighs> nice. I'll come back to that in a minute, sorry. I'm doing exactly what I said I wouldn't do. Uh, Philip, a morning, John, just love the William Morris. Previously ordered the Kelmscott and now into Merton. Will you be having any Kelmscott back? Isn't Kelmscott what my quilt's made of in the next hour? I've got all I've got. I don't think we're getting it back as a half metre range, uh, Philippa, but in the next hour, I've got, they're over there now, I haven't got them yet. I've got fat quarters, but not fat quarters, they're in a bundle to make, to make the quilt. They're in a bundle to make the quilt. That's, but that's the only way I've got them at the moment. I, I, don't, I don't think we are getting it again by the half metre. Yes. Yes, I, in fact, in fact, I think, now we only find anything out in this place by eavesdropping, and I think I heard them saying that the fat quarters were made from what we had, what, you know, the, 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 the we bought the last of the fabric and made fat quarters out of it, basically. I think that's what they said. Okay, then I've got um, chrysanthemum toile now. And I've still got, um, I've still got Philippa's there. Uh, Michelle's messaged in. Hello, Michelle, my love. Oh, okay. Which colour would you like to go to first, then? Taupe first. This is, now, this is a very, very delicate version. Still, you can still tell it's William Morris the minute you see it. Such good quality cotton as well, look. Oh, isn't that just subtle and gorgeous? Michelle says, woohoo, it's John. Uh, I'm sitting down with a huge coffee for the morning with sewing quarter. Oh, she says, oh, my goodness. William Morris and John, that's just bliss. And Marcy is messaging, good morning, lovely John. I'd just like to say hello to the team and the family watching. Oh, Marcy, are you lovely, lovely thing. So there you go. Oh, here we go. Mo. Who, I don't know if she's in, she's, it's a bit early to be in a, a, what's she got? Like an infinity pool and, yeah, like a hot tubby thing. Look at watching the twirling dolphins up, up north. The asparagus sauce you're talking about is called brown butter vinaigrette. Nice. Oh, have you just Googled that? Or did you know that, Mo? She's lived a very, very posh life as Mo. She used to live in Richmond. She used to go to Uber Auberge. Anyway, should we look at this? Oh, love it, love it, love it. So this is the taupe chrysanthemum toile. So again, the, the size of the print, it's the same, it's the same, let me just show you, let me get this one back. It's the same pattern as this. Toile meaning, I presume he drew this one first, because you know how we make a toile of a dress. I, I could be wrong, I could be wrong, Mo could tell me that in a minute, but look at this, it's exactly the same pattern. Look, oh, it's exact, it is exactly the same pattern, but smaller and not coloured in. The toile. Yes, no, it would be lovely. Let me take the red one out. The, the toile one would be, because the toile one would look lovely in a bedroom, because it's very, 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 very soft and relaxing, this one, isn't it? Or, if you're going to go for those tones, we will mix and match later, um, for like a, a, um, a throw on the bed or something. It's lovely, isn't it? Okay. I'm glad you're loving it so much. I will, I'll keep you updated on stock, but we're, we're fine at the moment, but lots and lots of people putting this in their basket. Uh, now look at the aqua one. The aqua one is just, same as that one, same as that one. They're done by Free Spirit, these, so you know that the cotton's a good quality. Oh, sorry, sorry, this one's called cream, not aqua. That's my bad. You see, now, you'd think they'd call it aqua, wouldn't you? Because the rest of it's aqua. Sorry, it's cream, this one. Again, very soft and delicate. But the flowers are the same aqua that are in the other tones there. But that one, they really lift, the flowers lift from the background, don't they? Because you've got that lovely cream background and then the beautiful aqua flowers. Look at the attention to detail within. You know it must be a good quality cotton to be able to get such fine print as this to come out of it. Should I say that, Hannah? Seven ninety nine. 
Seven pounds and 99 pence. What she's saying is William Morris would only, they're such a, an established qual, name of quality, they'd only go to somebody like Free Spirit or a quality company like that. They wouldn't go to some... If I told you what Hannah had said, we'd be taken off air right now. Yes. Oh, now there's a strand about Hannah's, about Hannah's uh, appearance on telly on the, the Facebook page. Everyone's looking for the show where Hannah had to come on air, but it's not on YouTube. It's not on YouTube. Right now, this one, I think this one has the most period feel of the three of these, because look at that intense colour. This one's the red, but it's not bright red. It's not a bright red at all. It's almost like a washed out red, but isn't it beautiful? But it looks very vintage, doesn't it? There's no pears on it, they're chrysanthemums. Are you talking about escape? Oh, yeah, that, that later on, um, William and... Um, what they call William and Mary on Gogglebox? They've got... Mary, Giles. Giles and Mary it is. She, I think it's the willow coming up soon. I think it's the willow pattern they've got. But she's got wallpaper. I'm talking about a lady on Gogglebox. The wallpaper, the chair and her skirt all made from the same um, design, William Morris design. Oh, that is lovely, isn't it, the red? If you want me to show you any of these together, just let me know. So, you, can, you know, if you want to see them net side by side, so you can go with um, the ones you like. I've got another half an hour, so I'm fine. OK, we can indulge ourselves in this. So that one's called Chrysanthemum Toile. Now, which one would you like me to go to next, then, Hannah? OK, then this one is the Willow Burrows, it's called. This one comes in three colours. It's aqua, it's red, and it's black. So, so you know, aqua, red, and black. Let's do the aqua first. This is the one, this is the one I think that Giles and Mary's chair and wallpaper's made out of. And a skirt. If you watch Gogglebox, have you been watching Escape to the Chateau? Oh! I love them. She's crazy, isn't she? Angel. Well, it, the voiceover calls her Angel, but he calls her Angela. I'm watching the one where they buy it. Well, no, no, because Vanessa says, she watches, Vanessa Feltz this is on the radio, not, she's not a friend of mine. Well, I didn't get invited to a party. Um, she said she watches it every day on Channel 4 in the afternoon. Is it the same couple? Oh. Uh, I just wonder how she kisses him with that great big walrus moustache. Seven ninety-nine. The husband is so kind and lovely. She just goes, oh, could you build a health skelter for the children? In the middle, mid, and how they're doing on 20,000 pounds, I don't really understand. Yeah, but she, he said that they bought it for 200, 180 and they had 20,000 pounds to spend. They spent 18,000 pounds on the central eating. Anyway, back to this, back to this, back to this. But she did, did you see when she did all, she found all those old wallpapers and there wasn't enough to do the, it was to do the bridal turret. So she did diamonds of all the wallpapers. I'll just stick of that, there you go. She did the turret, right? And she cut all the, she found boxes of all these old hand painted um, wallpapers in this, in this thing. And she cut them into diamonds and wallpapered them, but they weren't, her max wasn't very good. They didn't match. So she then got some of that lovely um, corded braid and put it in between. So, oh, it's just beautiful. Anyway. I'd, I'd like to, in, in theory, I'd like to be them, but I wouldn't want all the hard work. Seven ninety-nine for half a metre. I've got to the one where her mum and dad have just arrived, and um, he's the dad's clearing a path, and then they were clearing out the orangery where their wedding's going to be, and the next episode is their wedding. Well, Hannah wants to get married there. Uh, the thing is, Hannah. You do have to have a groom or another bride, if you want another bride, but she doesn't want another bride. Okay. Red or black now? Red. Here we go. Again, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's kind of... 
impactful. Is that the word? Impactful. Right, Hannah's thinking Christmas tableware already. I'm thinking, though, I, I think I've already done this once. Look at these two together. Isn't that lovely? Look at those two together. So this one here that you're seeing here, this is the um, willow boughs, not burrows, boughs, sorry. And then this one here was the chrysanthemum. But uh, look, can you imagine, because it would just, imagine that blended into that, it's just going to look stunning, isn't it? Okay, I'm getting rid now of the chrysanthemum now. Uh, that's lovely. Who's watched all three series, did you say? Oh, Michelle's watched all three series. She thinks they're fantastic. Is there a new one? Um, See, I'm only watching... Is this the first one? I'm, I only turned it on because Hannah said she was watching it. One of the many shows that she watches. You ask Hannah about any little town in America that's had some sort of thing. She knows all about it. And she doesn't just watch it once. She watches it about four times. Anyway, that's nice. That's gorgeous. Let me just get that other one from over there. Oh, look. $7.99 these are. So this is chrysanthemum in taupe, this one here, going across the bottom. Doesn't that look lovely? I'm a bit worried because my director's having trouble seeing it. Anyway, I'll move that one out. Uh, that is lovely, isn't it? It's quite dramatic on its own. Quite dramatic on its own. I think I'd want to mix, definitely mix it with something. Okay, so that was my willow bow. So next is it... To, oh, we we're missing out snakeheads, but I'll go to Trellis. Uh, trellis, right, this is one... Uh, when he did the wallpapers, because obviously he designed all these as wallpapers to start with, this was one of his best-selling wallpaper patterns. And when, if you look at it on a wall, if you, if you Google or Yahoo or Bing the, uh, any pictures of this, it looks so incredible. I think curtains would be gorgeous in this. So now I've got three different colorways again. Sage, aqua, and taupe. Sage, aqua, and taupe. So I'll do sage first. Oh, now, unfortunately, I haven't got... Normally, I'd be going draping at the window, wouldn't I? But I haven't really got enough. There's not really enough there. Oh, do you know what else this would look lovely? A, a little mini skirt. You know, like a little box pleated mini skirt. Or a bag, yeah. Hannah's going, or a bag, or a bag. Oh, I haven't got any pins here, have I? Uh, the Merton Range, it's because it's one of his houses, isn't it? Is, isn't it the one in Oxfordshire? Isn't it that one? Look, you see, box pleated, it looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Look. Oh! Uh, and next to the house, next to the house is where they used to dye all the fabrics in the river next door to the house. It was all vegetables then. Uh, but he, uh, all, all these designs, he travelled a lot. William Morris travelled a lot. And all these designs are very much kind of um, uh, Indian and um, all the East, the, the mystic East and everything like that. He used to love travelling. He'd get all his inspiration from there and then come back and draw, you know, flowers and things from home, but use the influence from his travels and everything. Obviously, this one was his garden trellis. It's lovely. It's like a, uh, somebody saying, uh, what Michael's saying, it reminds me of an apple pie. He has posh apple pies if he's got lattice on the top, is not he? There's that, that, what's that lemon pie with the, the trellis on the top? Mo will know. Mo will know the answer to that one. I don't know why I'm pointing there. Mo's not in the computer. Right, which colour next? Taupe next. This is called guilt trellis. Not guilt as in, oh dear, I've done something wrong. Guilt as in, you know, painted gold guilt. That, how brilliant would that be? How brilliant would that be as a, um, as a blender? Look at this, right? I'm just going to put these two together. <sighs> nice. Do you know what you could almost do? 
you could almost reverse applique and maybe cut out the odd square and have flower, flowers behind it. Do you think that would work? Am I being silly? Nobody's listening? No? Do you not think? No, obviously not. Yeah, now, Hannah's convinced. Have you got a picture there? OK. No, no, but Hannah's convinced she's seen the picture of the trellis wallpaper with actual flowers on it. And so it's going through it like a proper trellis. Yes, I can, I can hear you. Uh, what, what you need to do is Yahoo, Google, or Bing, uh, William Morris um, trellis, gilt trellis. You'll see, or just put trellis in, and you'll see, oh, yes, really beautiful. I, they're just showing me a picture, which we, we can't show you because we don't own the picture, but really beautiful flowers and birds all growing between to the trellis. Oh, I like that one. Anyway, last one now, aqua. You see, I'd almost want to put something sparkly with this. Is that a sacrilege? Well, it's the gilt is because it would be the gold paint, wouldn't it? The, the, the gilt is the, is the finish on, on it sort of thing. This one, if you look carefully, they look like, it looks like it's a bit golden. Go on. Oh, OK. <laughs> Hannah's saying, Hannah's saying, uh, when, when she uh, in introduces William Morris into her house, she's going to make a duvet cover, and a, or not duvet cover, but a throw for the bed, because when she moves house, she can take it with her. She doesn't want to leave the wallpaper. Yeah, but you can... Oh, you are funny, but you're going to have to leave the wallpaper that is there. We've got a lot to learn, Hannah. Well, I've got, I've got the uh, um, hand-printed wallpaper on my bedroom wall. I can't take that with me. There we go. Snake's head. No, I was going to say, in your village, I don't think they'd appreciate it, would they? Mind you, Hannah's had a... a you know, um, the sewing bee's coming back. Uh, Hannah lives in the same village as the new presenter. She's not, she said uh, he's not been round. And then we watched him on, um, the other day, we were watching him on, to see who he was and everything, on YouTube or something like that. And he was talking about his local village. And, and he said, there's this woman there. And I was like, oh, Hannah, wouldn't this be awful if he suddenly started describing you? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, here we go. So I've got the three different colours in this. This is called Snake's Head, this one. Not the most uh, glamorous of colours. So now this one, that one's called... Sage, am I right? Oh, hang on. Yeah, that one's called Sage in this one. Aqua and then Taupe. So should we do Taupe first? Yeah. But I just have to tell you that the red one, for some reason, is called Sage in this collection. Now, this one would be brilliant for fussy cutting, wouldn't it? Because you've got definite, definite icons or, or pattern, a pattern print there. That's nice, isn't it? You like this one because it's got pineapples in it. Yeah, pineapple, sign of wealth, sign of wealth. Maybe you were very rich in the past life, Hannah. Yeah, because if you love William Morris fabric and you love pineapples, I think you were rich Victorian. Maybe, I wonder if you knew me, because I was about in the Victorian... If you believe in this sort of thing, if you believe in this sort of thing. But I, I was regressed once, and, um, to, and I was a doctor in Victorian England. Um, but the frightening thing is, right, it was when I was on this morning, and we used to, we did all these regressions, and then afterwards they sent an investigator, and they found my uh, wedding... Certificate to Emily, they found my death certificate. It was very, very freaky. Now, very, they couldn't do the other one. When I was a biblical gem hunter in um, Jordan, in bis biblical times, they couldn't find any proof of that one. Uh, aqua. Uh, 
Okay. Are you a Charles Darwin, are you? Look, isn't this lovely? That, and now you see, I love the colour of that really, really suits that pattern, doesn't it? Seven ninety nine for half a metre. Huh? Look more, they look they look more like pineapples in this one, don't they? Look, I'll just put it there you. Go. I think it might be a perfume bottle, is it not? Well where's uh, where's the snake's head then? Do you think that's the head snake's head there? I think snake's head's a plant, Hannah, rather than an actual snake. Yeah, and you were a plant finder in Victorian times. You should know these things. You see, I don't think it's got anything to do with snakes at all, apart from I think it's that plant that where the bark divides itself into like to look like snake skin. It's beautiful anyway. That's the acorn. I'll take the acorn out. Oops. And then I've just got it in the red now. Oh, sage, 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 sage. There's something about this colourway, isn't there, that makes it look truly, truly vintage. You'd imagine seeing something like this in a really old house on Escape to the Country, wouldn't you? Hannah's wondering why every, all the, all the programmes I talk about are uh, late afternoon programmes. It's because I have to go to bed so early to get up here. So when I get in, like four o'clock is like my late night, isn't it? When I'm sitting, watching the telly, watching my Jeremy Kyles. Sarah's much in. Hello, John. Uh, Whitwick Manor in Wolverhampton is decorated with William Morris wallpaper and fabric. It's stunning and well worth a visit from Sarah. Oh, is that where you live, Sarah? I won't say. It's in Warwickshire. I won't to Warwickshire. That's not the one I drive through in the morning, is it? No, I drive through Binton, don't I? You're further down. Oh, it's plant from the Lily family. There you go. We, Ginger Mike was completely right. No, no, you see, the Indian influence, when they came home and then drew flowers at home using the influences from the Far East and things like that. Right, last but not least, I've got florets, which I always think of as uh, cauliflower. Or broccoli, because that's what they're called in Waitrose. Don't get me started on Waitrose today. No, and it's not Waitrose Fox, Waitrose Car Park. I'll tell you very, very quickly. What time is it? Very quickly. I parked in Waitrose Car Park the other day, my local Waitrose, went into the shop. When I came out, there was a man, he had, I oh, better not say the make of the car, but it was a very, it was a something 90, and it was enormous, right? Anyway, I put my bag in the boot like this, went round to get in my car. He was in the car. And he was parked this close to my car, so I couldn't get to my parking seat. So I kind of went, um, like this, being polite, um, like this. And he looked at me, shrugged his shoulders, and he was talking on the phone, and just carried on talking on the phone. So I was like, oh, you'll move in a minute. I had to get in the passenger side. <laughs> and when you're 39, it's not easy, is it? And climb over and get in all the time. And then as I pulled off, he just turned like that and just sm smirked. But I think it was um, the size of the parking space more than anything. But they make cars too big, don't they, these days? Anyway, florets, red, aqua, and taupe. Taupe first. This is, this is a more modern take on, but they've taken, they've taken the, 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 I'll show you again, from the center of the chrysanthemum fabric, the florets from the center, you see, they've taken that design from the center flowers and kind of interpreted it into that, haven't they? It's in the center of all the flowers, actually. Look, it's in the center of that one as well. Anyway, it's called Florence. Uh, brilliant as a blender, I'd take this one. I don't think you'd make this one as your main feature fabric, would you? But as a blender, that'd be lovely. Taupe Florets, that one's called. Okay. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Hello, all. Snake's head is the name of a flower. F oh, now this is going to be like convolulus, isn't it? Fit fit Hang on, I've got to say this carefully now. Fritillary. 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 Oh, it's right. You're right, Marie. You're right. 
And Joel and Jean said that as well. Which Jean was it? Oh, hello, Jean from Essex. Right, this is the, uh, oh, hang on, sorry, the taupe's gone. No, 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 I think the taupe's going now. This is Aqua. Oh, look, Sandra says, if you like William Morris, visit Wickwick Manor. That's the second person to mention that. They have a large collection. Yeah, it's all got disappeared, that's all. Yeah, it's okay. And with other pre-Raphaelite pre treasures. Oh, lovely. And the, the art gal the gallery in Birmingham, which is free, is it to go in, did you say? Did you say it was free to go in? Um, has the largest, one of the largest collections of pre-Raphaelite paintings. I went to college with a girl called Sue Bath, and she was from the pre-Raphaelite age, and she, was, she did the art course, she wasn't doing the drama course. And um, all she did was draw those beautiful pre-Raphaelite and she, oh, she was brilliant. I don't know what happened to her. Anyway. And then last but not least in this collection. Now, if you do want to see any of them put next to each other, do let Hannah know, because I've only got about three minutes to show you. Five minutes, apparently. Five, not three. You said just said five minutes, John, didn't you? Oh. <laughs> I do apologise. I'm here. But I said three minutes, Mike went, no, five, John, five. He, wasn't, he was talking about camera five. Right, now, what I need to show you is, now this, this might confuse some of you because it confused me and both me and Hannah, is what I've got here is a quilt made of all of these fabrics here, but I haven't got this a bundle available, but I just want to show you the fab. If I show you a p I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll show you a block rather than the whole thing so you can see what the fabrics could look like together. Oh, there you go. There you go. I was just going to show one block because we haven't got that as a bundle. We haven't got that as a whole bundle, you see, but look. So you, then you've got your chrysanthemum toile there. You've got your snake head. Oh, sorry. Your snake head here. There's your snake head in a different colour there. Then you've got your florets here. And then you've got your vine boughs here, you see. A willow. What am I trying to say? Willow boughs are there. You see what I mean? So, but I'm not showing you the whole quilt quilt because I haven't, got, I haven't got this as a bundle, but I have got... Watch the beginning of the next hour because I have got that in the Kelmscott range. That's confusing, doesn't it? Right. Right, so don't forget, if you want half a metre, let me just make them look nice and tidy. If you want half a metre of everything, we have our mega bundle. So I'll, I'll look at you, I'll just do this first so you can see how beautiful it looks. Oh, now, the mega bundle, we did, we, because we saw how quickly the mega bundle of the last range went. I've only got 22 left. And I know that might, you might go, oh, that's loads. But actually, if you think we have 30,000 people signed up as, you know, kind of um, regulars and customers and things, 22 isn't very many at all. And I don't know, I don't know if we can get it again. I don't know if we can get it again. So if you do, and I'm not adding any undue pressure, obviously I'm not, because, you know, it's £143.49. You do get nine metres of the most exquisite fabric, 44 inches wide, 100% cotton, machine washable, from Free Spirit, from the William Morris collection. But aren't they lovely? Aren't they just beautiful? £143.49. Right, I've just moved that out. Somebody's asked to see the green bijou bundle. No. There's the green bijou bundle. Somebody's asked to see. You get three metres, 29 pounds and 49 pence. Just having a look to see what, what you can... Oh, that might be quite nice, might not it, with the... That's a gilt trellis in... Was it sage yet, sage? That could be beautiful. I'm just going to take that out, because I'm just going to put the chrysanthemum toile in there, in the taupe. 
You see, that's nice, isn't it? That's the, that's the one in taupe. That's the one in taupe. I think the blue one might be too, the, the aqua one might be too. Oh no, look, that one's nice. So even though that's aqua with the greens, that's nice, isn't it? But I think the taupe works best. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's the one that's cream. Sorry, it's called cream, yeah, if you want looking for it. This one's taupe that's here. And let me, I'll just put this one in, because so, so that's the chrysanthemum toile in taupe. I've also got the chrysanthemum toile. I called it aqua, but it's actually called cream. But the, 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 the flowers are actually the same color as the aqua. That looks nice, doesn't it? This one, the, chrysan the chrysanthemum toile fabric is the most popular out of all of them. An aqua willow. Oh, that's because of Giles and Mary. What do you bet? There it is. There's your aqua willow. Very, very, very popular. It's, it's, typical, it's a typical... You can look at it and you go, William Morris. That's what happens, isn't it? You just look at it and you say, William Morris. OK, right. Um, make sure you check out your baskets. Um, because obviously, you're all okay at the moment. You're all okay at the moment. But obviously, as the day goes on, the repeats happen. People will, people will come in for it. Uh, don't go to it. It's me again on my own for the next hour. And what I've got is I've got tools, but I've also got quilt, quilt bundles. And I love this one. This is a Jane Alcock special, this one. I've got that one coming up in the next hour as well. So uh, don't go anywhere. Get yourself a cup of tea. Is it a lovely day out there? I'll see you in three minutes from now. Follow us on Pinterest, search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Hi, I'm Tilly Rose and here are my three top tips. The first would be to actually be in the moment, allow yourself to uh, be surrounded by all those lovely fabrics and cloth and thread and just take time out. Enjoy your stitching, whether that's machine embroidery or free motion or slow stitching, just allow yourself to connect with the thread and cloth and you'll enjoy the projects much more. So my second tip would be to allow yourself to go wrong. Give yourself permission to make mistakes because we all learn from our mistakes. Um, I've been sewing for a very, very long time and I still make loads and loads of mistakes. Um, but that's okay, because you can use those small little pieces in other projects later on down the line. Um, but it's good, it's okay. So my third tip would be quite simply, break all the rules. Um, if you want to experiment with different threads or different fabric, um, you might have read in a pattern or something that maybe you shouldn't do that. Um, I would say, yeah, break the rules. And that's how you learn to allow your creativity to um, come through in your designs. There are many different ways you can buy from us here at the Sewing Quarter. You can order from us by calling our free phone number at 0800 112 44 and talk to the team at our UK-based call centre. Alternatively, there are other ways you can buy from us. You can go online and shop through our website at www.sewingquarter.com. You can even watch the show there and shop as you go. You can check out as many times as you like throughout the day and only pay a small fee of £2.95 postage and packaging for the whole day. We also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all products, excluding custom-cut fabric. Our friendly UK-based team will help guide you through every step. On Wednesday, the 25th of April, we're sending you Hexy Kisses, as Lucy Brennan will be creating the prettiest Hexy quilt by Jen Kingwell. This sweet quilt is created out of diamond and hexagonal shapes coming together to give the illusion of delicate cross kisses. The quilt contrasts dotty fabric with a selection of floral and stylish patterns perfect for adding a subtle splash of colour to your room. So join us on Wednesday the 25th of April at 9am where Lucy will be demonstrating the Hexy Kisses quilt. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678.
I don't know why that says elegant table linen. It's meant to be quintessentially quilting is what we're doing, not elegant table linen at all. Right, before I start though, before I start, I need to tell you about, you know the data protection thing that comes in at the end of May, beginning of June, where if you want to carry on getting uh, emails from people, I, like I said, I've had to do it at the vets, I've had to do it so they can email me somewhere where Norman and Lily's um, appointments are, I've had to do it at the financial advisors, and I've had to do it somewhere else. Uh, 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 you literally have to re-sign, it's all data protection, so I can't make you do it, but it means that if you're on our um, newsletter and you get, in your pro you get promos, you get emails about special days and things like that, we can't send it to you after the end of May unless you re-sign. So if you go to our website, I'll just show you this, you go to the website or do that, your, um, what's that thing called when it's www, what's that called? Link www.sendquarter.com forward slash sign up. Web link, is it? I don't know. Uh, but you can go to our, the front page of our website, just click on, there's a straightforward link on the front page of our website with that blue teddy bear. Takes literally, I mean, just put your name, your email address in, that's it, that's all you have to do. And you must press the submit button as well. Apparently there are a few issues doing it on an iPad, so do try and do it on your, um, or at other tablets. Oh, okay, and it didn't work on Hannah's phone either. So um, just, just do it on your computer, it's easier. And if you haven't got a computer, you can do it by, um, well, you won't be able to send you emails if you haven't got a computer, would you? But anyway, you can ring the call centre and they can do it for you. Right, so I am going to go on to quilts in a second, quilt kits in a second. And obviously, um, CL's coming up later. You've only got one, there's only one mannequin there. But um, with lots of a roundup and the tools of CL for two hours after this hour. So that's it at the weekend, isn't it? Anyway, 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 anyway. So where shall I start? Oh, somebody's been using this one. Nearly empty, this one, Christopher. Uh, oh, Lucy Brennan's getting the blame. Right, oh. Now, if you are um, using, if you're, if, you're, if you're putting a quilt together, uh, or a quilt as you go together or something like that, and you just want to use some adhesive, to put the two fabrics together. I'm not gonna spray it because it's um, a, a glue, it's a glue. Please use it in a ventilated room. But you can literally just spray it onto the wadding and put your fabric down on it and it just does. And now is this one, the re I'm just gonna get my glasses. Um, the repositional one. Yep. Uh, spray the 505 from a distance of 25 centimeters, only spray on a very thin layer of the adhesive. Uh, you can wash it off with water. It's odor, well, it says it's odorless, it's colourless. It has that, it does have a, um, uh, not an odour, but you can tell you're spraying. It's for embroidery, patchwork hobbies, um, quilting, put quilting layers together. Uh, all our experts use it all the time. It's 505, that one. The 505 spray. 7.99. That will last you a long time. This one's been open for ages, it's just that Lucy went overboard on it yesterday, I think. Because Lucy, not only when she does a quilt she go, not only does she do the adhesive on the quilt she go, she uses this as well. And some of the quilt she go don't have adhesive on, so she uses that on its own. But she likes to have a good firm layer. So that's all. Right, next. The tool. Oh, have we? Oh, done a bundle for you today. This is the, Angie asked us to bring this on, right? It is the Avery micro stitch stitch tool with two refills uh, in a bundle for 32 pounds and 49 pence. The way it works, now, when you're making a quilt sandwich, a lot of the time, now think of it as a, as a quilt size, right? Um, Chris made this for me, look. Yeah, look, he did a sandwich for me today. So if you're gonna create, oh, I thought he's done cross hatching then, but he's just done the, um, it's very good. How did you do it so straight, Christopher? It was just by eye. He said, maybe you're a natural. Maybe you should go on the Great British Sewing Bee. Can you imagine when something went wrong? <laughs> the bleeping, they'd have to have the bleep machine ready to go, wouldn't they? Anyway, 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 if you're making, you know when you're making um, normally a quilt sandwich and you've got your backing fabric, you've got your wadding, and then you've got your, your patchwork or your top fabric, a lot of people do big basting stitches or they do, um, you know, the banana-shaped... Um, safety pins or or you can use well you you wouldn't you use the spray for the bottom one but the, the, a lot of them don't like to use the spray for the top one do they but anyway if 
brilliant, brilliant, brilliant way of, of attaching the three layers. Now, obviously, Chris has already started quilting this one, but if it, they were three loose layers, so you'd, you'd have this, right? You take the, the safety catch off, because this is a sharp needle here. You've put the, uh, you know these like Kimball tags in the shop, you know, when you get your um, uh, price tags on, on clothes and your size tags on clothes. They're, they're very like that, by shortened version, right? What you literally do is you literally push this through your th quilt layers, press the key, Oh, and that doesn't work. There it is, you see, look. Look, can you see them coming through? So it holds, or you can put as many as you want in, and it holds your two layers together. Look, there's the one that didn't work. Hold your two layers together. You can machine over these, right? And then when you're finished, you can get your scissors, or you can just pull them off like that and get rid of them and they're gone, but you can machine over them, so there's no problem. You know, if you've used safety pins or you've done your big tacking stitches, you don't want to run over those, do you? Now, so today, um, I'll show you the bundle, because you get the tool, I'll put the um, safety catch back on. Uh, in the packet, you already get refills, but in the bundle we're doing today, we've got black and natural, or neutral bundles. There's something like, the two thousand, there's 2,400 in here, 2,400 in here, plus in the, oh, I haven't got the packet. In the packet, you always get some in the package as well. So that's going to keep you going for a while, isn't it? And it was Ange, it was Ange that asked for this. Just be, just be keep it out of the reach of children, because that is a sharp needle there, that's all. And also, when you're putting them through, make sure your finger's not in the way. Right? It's brilliant. £32.49, that is. There it is again in the packet. Micro-stitch tool. Yeah, I thought that I thought that'd be popular this morning. Okay. And the, the, this is what they're like. I'll, I'll just show you here. This is what they're like. Sorry, I know the graphs are gone, but just for those of you who are ordering it now. This is what the Kimball tag things are like. And you literally just slide that into the top of the machine. And then as they're used, it's like, you know, it goes down. And then obviously it's... They'll all be gone at the bottom there. Okay? Right. Oh, I've got waddings to do next. They're all here. Right, so I've got to start with... <clears throat> hang on. I've got... This one here is queen-size cotton. This one here is... Three meter size by bamboo, and this one here is another bamboo. So start with the cotton one. And the, th the thing is, everybody, <coughs> all the everybody we know who does quilting, oh sorry, <coughs> likes different. They like different batting. On the website, there are all sorts, but the three we've chosen to show you today are these three. So this is cotton, hundred percent cotton. It's uh, called queen size, which is 90 inches by 108 inches. I think it's up there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and it's uh, they're so simple. Super soft wadding. £39.99. Well, that's for your queen. That's for your, so if you've done a queen size um, quilt, then it's perfect for that, isn't it? But obviously you can cut it up and use it for lots of different... Um, sizes, you know what I mean? You can chop it up as much as you need. And it's got 100% um, cotton, that one. Lovely and soft. Look, you can see, you can just see, can't you, how beautiful and squidgy it is. £39.99. OK, now I've got two bamboo ones. Which size would you like first? As a three metre size, does it say? This one's got a bamboo mix in it. Now, bamboo is very good for people with allergies and things like that. 50% cotton, 50% bamboo. Uh, oh, no. OK, it says it's a three-metre size. Now, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've got a queen size here, and I've got a three-metre size here. What's, oh, I've got the code. What's the code? It's that one. It says that one. It says that one. It says that one. No, what I'm questioning is it says it's a three metre size. Oh, yeah, 228 by 300 centimetres. That's that one there. 42.99. Now, that's huge. That's a big one. It says it's a queen, but the queen size, let me just check. 
Queen size is 90 by 108. This one's 90 by 118, this one. Oh. Yeah, 228 by 300. Yes, now, uh, a lot of people um, put bamboo. You can get bamboo socks and bamboo pants and things. Very good for like, antibacterial, isn't it? I don't know enough about it to say to you, but you can, you, you can Google it and check for yourself. £42.99 and pence on. I know they're not very interesting to look at. It's an essential if you're making a quilt, isn't it? It's essential if you're making a quilt. And then last but not least... I've got the bamboo mix again. This one is 90 by 108, 228 by 274 centimetres. 50-50 mixed bamboo. We don't have 100%. I, I don't think, do, we, do they do 100% bamboo? Oh, we don't do 100%. Yeah, you can get it elsewhere. This is 50-50, yeah. Because the pants and the socks you buy aren't all bamboo, are they? Also, bamboo is thought of, uh, considered a more renewable crop. Well, you see how fast it grows. If you put bamboo in your garden, I could bring some in if you want. Danny, my gardener, he um, chopped the bamboo down and he's made um, bamboo sticks. They're drying in the garage, you know, so you can have your own bamboo sticks to hold other plants up. So it's like, like when you have sunflowers. Yes, exactly, and things like that. £38.99. Do you, obviously, obviously, go to the website because there's so many. We've got polyester, we've got cotton, we've got the bamboo, we've got every different size you can imagine. Just go, if you go to the website, go to shop, go into Waddings, and they're all listed there. They'll, they'll have the, if you go in there, they'll also have the quilt as you go mixed in with them, but just have a good look at which ones you might want. I'll go do some quilts, can I? Because the show is called Sewing Quarter. Right. Some of my favourite, 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 favourite quilts here. Oh, yes. Now, I wasn't here for this one the other day. This is the... I'll just show you on the, on the pattern here. This is the Nicola Dodd. Uh, Nicola Dodd did this one the other day. Um, it's called the Hearth and Home Quilt. Now, she made it out of the new Merton fabrics but we have got a bundle for you to be able to make it out of the Kelmscott ones, the original one. Somebody messaged in earlier saying, are we going to get Kelmscott back? At the moment, this is the only way that you can get Kelmscott from us, and I don't think we can order it again. That's the problem. That's the problem. So let me go through the basics here. You get six and a half metres of fabric, first of all. You get half a metre of these two... Um, Bijou range that you saw earlier. So you get a blue one and a green one out of there. So you get uh, that feels like half a meter, half a meter of each. Then it looks, then it feels. Now I better check. Yes, I thought so. That this is marine blue. You get a meter of marine blue, and then you get three and a half meters of the vanilla. But then you think, well, where's the rest of it? The rest of it's here. Now, just so you know, that one at the back there is made of a different range. It's made of the range we had in the last hour. It's not made of the Kelmscott, just so you know, just so you know. So these are the fabrics you'd be able to choose from. These are the fat quarters. So we've got bachelor's button. We've got marigold. We can't sell you these by the half meter anymore, I'm afraid. So look. Let me just put that one there. That's marigold down there. Now you see some of these, that, oh look, there's um, Strawberry Thief. Um, well, I'll just put that one there a minute. You see, when we did the collection, I don't remember this one, or the stripy one, or the dotty one, or that one. Um, gorgeous, aren't they? But I have to say, one of these, I don't know if this has got here by accident, that's from the, that one there's from the Merton range. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, okay. So maybe there's a crossover. Even they've called it, called it Kelmscott for in the fat quarters. I, that there is definitely a Merton from the show earlier. I mean, it works beautifully. It works beautifully. So this one here 
is Bachelor's Button. That one there's Bachelor's Button. That one there's Marigold. That one's Lily Vine Leaf. This one, let me show you this one. Strawberry Thief, this one. Strawberry Thief, that one. Classic. Then you've got all these others, which I've not, you see, when I, did, when I launched these, because I, I launched the Strawberry Thief one, didn't I? I don't remember any of these. Hang on, let's have a look. Um, I, no, no, not those, these, look. Look. Okay, that's from the, they're, they're from the Kelmscott range, look. They can look fantastic, aren't they, together, these? Aren't they beautiful? Aren't they just gorgeous? There you go, that's Count Cut Dotty one there, in the dark blue. That's it in the, um, like a taupe colour. And then this is, this is lovely, isn't it? Look. So you're getting all of these fat quarters, plus all of the, the traditional ones underneath there. You get 12 fat quarters. You get six and a half meters of fabric and the instructions. Designed by Nicola Dodge. You know, Nicola has been in a few times with the seagull and the turtle. Oh, in fact, I think I've got the seagull. Uh, we did the seagull as, um, as a um, cushion when she was in, but then she came in again and she was on with Natasha last week and she did this quilt. Anyway, 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 I'm waffling. Isn't that beautiful? I love that one. I don't remember that one being in the collection, though. Oh, right. Okay, okay. Once you've all checked out your baskets, there are fewer than 10 of these, these bundles. So just have a look at the sale. So now, oh, it is there, that Myrtle one. That Myrtle one is meant to be there. Obviously what it is, is they needed another one to, it blends beautifully, so don't worry about it. Hmm? Aren't they lovely, 99 pounds and 99 pence. Gorgeous, and then of course all this fat, the six and a half meters of fabric. Oh, and there's a thread as well. Fabric and instruction, just to mention, get the threads as well. It's on the picture, it's on the picture. And then the instructions. Look, oh my word, typical of Nicola, very, very thorough. Incredible, isn't it? Fantastic. Right, I'll come back to it, I'll come back to it, but <clears throat> just please be careful with your quantities on that one. Jackie, the text says the quilt kit is on its way. Oh, the she's just had a text to say the quilt kit is on its way. William Morris, hip hip hooray, sun is shining, birds are tweeting. Quilt kit will get a rapturous greeting. Oh, hang on. Yeah, it, but it, when it comes through here, it, it's going, right. Text says quilt kit is on its way. William Morris, hip hip hooray. Sun is shining, birds are tweeting. Quilt kit will get a rapturous greeting from Jackie. Oh, thank you, Jackie, my love. Bit of poetry on a Saturday morning, bit of culture. Oh, it's Mary. Now, you see, the thing is, I always used to have my hair cut really, really short, didn't I? And then, you know, I go to pavers and everything, and, and Sheila and, and uh, Be Paved both went, oh, we hate your hair short, leave it longer. So I've left it longer, but I, I just haven't had a chance to go to the hairdresser all, so it's just as it is at the moment. Mary prefers it longer like this. It's just a bit of a mess, isn't it? I need, just need to tidy it up, I've noticed. Thank you. And she loves it when I'm on, thank you. Right, well, Oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. This is, let's have a look at the still of the quilt. This is the Nicola Dodd um, quilt that she did the same day that she did the Kelmscott one or the, the other one. Look, isn't it gorgeous? Now, if you want to see her making it, it was on the 14th of April. I think she did that one, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock she did that one. Isn't it gorgeous? Now, we've done the seagull block before because we made it into a cushion, if you remember. But what she's done is she's incorporated the, the house and the seagull. Oh, there's the seagull close to. Oh, sorry. Now, um, when we were making it, I said, oh, could you make it into a pigeon? And she said, oh, I don't see why not. Somebody then put on the fan page, they've adapted it to be a pigeon because their daughter loves pigeons. And then the daughter message going, mother, it's not pigeons I like, it's doves or something like that. It was very fun. Anyway. 
This is the, look at the, look at this, look at this. So in the kit, the, the instructions, you've got pages of instructions, look. We, I haven't got this quilt here to show you today, but look at the instructions. Everything you need to know, totally and utterly thorough. There's the seagull block, there's the house block. You've even got templates in here as well, look. Isn't it fantastic? Isn't it lovely? Where would you need the triangular template for, I wonder? Anyway, I haven't even shown you the fabrics yet, so that's just the instructions. That's what you get in the bundle there. Six and a half metres of fabric and the instructions for £59.49. and pence. Here's the fabric. Six and a half metres of it. Now, obviously, it's different fabric to that's in the quilt because the quilt is Nicola's own. It's on one of the beds in one of her spare rooms at the house. So, in here, you get half a metre, half a metre, half a metre, half a metre, half a metre of art gallery, gorgeous ditzy florals there. And then, and then is it half a metre of the spot on as well? Steel grey, that's a Katie Jane one there. Then the white, the optical white, a metre and a half. That's for your little crisscrosses and your houses. Pearl blue, three and a half metres for the background. Sorry, now put it back in the bag, you can't really see it. So you get all of that, six and a half metres, and the instructions. There's the kit there. So now I want to use the grey for, she must use the grey for the roof and the, Pigeon, seagull, the florals for the doors and the windows, and then the white, obviously, for the crisscross, and then the blue for the background. £59.49. and 49 pence. Oh, OK. Um, OK, I need to tell you, though, I need to tell you, there's a, in the William Morris one, you get your fat quarter, your 12-piece fat quarter, you get your instructions. Now, there's been a bit of an issue. You'll, you'll get enough fabric to make it, but in here, oh, no. I just need to change the graphics. Oh, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, it says six and a half metres, right? Six and a half metres. But actually, you get half a metre and half a metre, which is one metre, one metre of the blues, which is two metres, and three and a half of that, so that makes five and a half metres, not six and a half. I do apologise. I do apologise. Absolutely. You've got enough there to make your whole quilt, though. I do apologise. Just need to tell you these things, like, to be upfront and honest. I'm surprised they didn't notice it when they did it on the day. OK. Right, now I just need to take that one there. Right, OK. Next, got a message from Joy to the World. Hello, John, just received a certain quarter parcel. Red willow boughs and sage snakes head fabric. Beautiful. Camera doesn't do them justice. There you go. That's nice, isn't it? It's better to um, that way round, isn't it? It'd be awful if you looked on the telly and thought they looked fabulous, and then get them home and think, ooh. But the other way round, it's even better. If you love it on the telly, you're going to absolutely adore it when it arrives. Thank you, Joy, my love. Oh, the pink pargello, it's gorgeous, isn't it? This is a Jane Alcock that I did with her um, uh, this month, I think it was, wasn't it? 2nd of April. Oh, it was Easter. It was the um, bank holiday weekend, wasn't it? I uh, know. Oh, it seems ages ago. You know. Anyway, it's a bank holiday. I'll be at work. Uh, what you get is... Oh, right, not all the instructions are here. Yes, 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 yes. OK, so what you get in the bundle is you get that gorgeous anthology um, fat quarter bundle. You don't need to use all of them. There's one or two of them you don't have to use. You'll have two of those. It's either one or two of those you have left over. Then you get half a metre of these gorgeous fabrics. You've got Amy Reba, two Amy Rebas here. And a Heather Bailey, the one about the Beatles. And then what you get is you get the instructions. I thought there was a picture as well, but there you get the instructions. But then this is the most important thing. Now, you're not going to see that there. 
This is the uh, cutting chart because you know what you do with um, Bargello's is you cut lots of strips of like two and a half. Uh, don't take me, don't take these um, measurements to heart. You need to see that. You cut lots and lots of strips by two and a half inches. Then you cut them all at different sizes. So you've got um, to create this. And then what you do is you sew them all into strips. Then you make it into a tube. Then you unpick it at certain, you know, between one and two, two and three, three and four, four and five, and that creates that incredible pattern. So this bundle will make the front and the binding on that quilt. That quilt's actually got beads on it. We haven't got beads today, but I think they're on the web. Well, they'll be on the website, the Shrovsky beads. The Shrovsky beads are on the website there. You also get two threads. It was a fantastic show, a fantastic show with it in pink and orange and blue and green. And it was Jane. Jane did, a, stay on that still for a second. Jane did so much work for it. Really, really, really worked hard. Uh, the anthology bundle is just stunning. Now, as I said, I, I think what it is, is you only use either 10 or 11 of these. And they, so you'll have one left over. I think you have one left over, do you? I think Jane went with the paid. Oh, no, there was one that Jane, you know what she, oh, sorry. Yes, so, so the, the flow, she loves the flow of fabric, and there was one of those that didn't flow for her, so she didn't put it in. But you don't need, you don't need, you only need 11 of them. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And you, and you make that shape. That's exactly what you're seeing on the wall there. Oh, not on the wall, on the picture. Oh, yeah, on the wall and on the picture. There and there is exactly what you'll make, exactly what you'll make with these instructions and this fabric here. I've only got pink, I've only got it in pink left. Only got it in pink left at the moment. I know we're trying to make more because we did have it in green and we did have it in blue and we had it in orange. But we could recreate the pink one because we're able to get the pink um, fat quarter bundle, but it's uh, whether we can recreate the others. It's beautiful, isn't it? And if you wanted to, if you bought two bundles, you could make it bigger. You could make it bigger. One bundle will make you that size, but you could, uh, could make it bigger if you wanted to. Watch Jane, watch the show, it's 2nd of April, and it was at uh, night, uh, yeah, she normally does eight o'clock, Jane, doesn't she? Eight o'clock and 10 o'clock. But just, if you go onto YouTube, you can scan through all four hours, it's not a problem. It's nice, yeah. And a sewing little message in to tell us in a minute what size it is, what, what time it is. Beautiful, isn't it? I love that. I love the Bargello anyway. But that, this, this pattern, this, this instructions will make that actual quilt. Okay. So I'll just put that, that and that together. So that goes there. What's next then, Hannah? Oh, yes. Okay, I've got some rulers here to show you. Some so easy laser cut. Oh, there were three here earlier. Someone been in here? Well, I've not been looking. Yeah, there was a triangle there earlier. I didn't move, knock it off, did I, with the... Oh, I knew somebody been in. See, she's arrived and she'd come on and just take it off my table. How very dare she, thank you. That's not her. Right, so I'll start with this one. This is the sh size ruler, the shape ruler that everybody says they start with. These are the so easy laser cut rulers, $15.99. Uh, this one's a little bit scratched and fingered because it's the one all our guests use when they, when they come in. Now, these, these, if these don't have the built-in grips or anything. These are a straightforward ruler at $15.99. But they have the inch increments and the quarter inch increments. They have the 30, 45, and 60 degree line on them, and they're 15 pounds and 99 pence. 24 by six and a half inches. Sorry, you can't see that very well there, can you? Okay. Then, what the second one, you, they, the, the designers always say, start with that one, and then the next one you need is a square one. This is the, it matches it perfectly. It's the so easy matching one. Ooh. Would it be easy if I just left it flat on the table, Michael? I just, I'm just thinking for, for, to look at it. That, there you go, that might be better, rather than having my busy shirt in the background. There you go, so this is the 25, 10 inch by 10 inch, 13 pounds and 99 pence. So easy patchwork square template. Uh, 
Okay, and then I've got a triangular one, which is the one CL needs back urgently to finish her prep. My task. I'll put it, I'll put it flat on the table. Now, this one's got more uh, measurements on it. You can see you've got the, the, all the dotted lines and the straight lines on there. So you can create all sorts of size triangles in there. Eight and a half by seven inches, it's 12.99. I'd love to know where he's going to put it. It's bigger than the table. Okay, you don't want me to put it flat on the table. Okay. Chris wants you to see this cutting mat, everybody. <laughs> oh, oh, that'll teach me. Ah! If you need a cutting mat, get a big one. Is it upside down? Is it upside down now? No, no, it's right. It's very echoey in here. This is the so easy extra large cutting mat. 39 pounds and 99 pence. If you've got the space, get a cutting mat. The, the, as big a cutting mat as you can. This one's 36 by 24. Is it? Yep. It's imperial. It's double-sided because you've got imperial on that side. Centimeters on that side, self-healing. And it's got a little hole here. You see it? Hang it up. Oh! No. That was weird. $39.99. There you go. Uh -huh, it's chatted. Got it? Oh, it's, it's just gone like that with it. I'm trying to be butch. Oh, no, I need that. Oh, no, don't. Rotary cutter. I'm not going to cut. I haven't got any fabric to cut with. Everyone loves this rotary cutter. It's very safe. Uh, Hannah calls this the squidgy uh, rotary cutter. Um, the way it works is you um, press the uh, lever in and the blade pops out and you can cut with it. But while that red uh, button is pushed out, it's locked. Nothing can happen there, right? So you unlock it by pressing the, bu the button. Then, look at this, you see? So as you engage the handle, the blade pops out. You can do your cutting. But then as soon as you let go of that handle, the blade retracts back into the, uh, the itself there, the safety guard there. It can also be uh, changed into a left-handed one. Oh, Hannah has this rotary cutter. It's still in its packet, but Hannah's got... No, it isn't. She's cut things. She does cut it out, and then she hasn't sewn anything together yet. Super soft handle there. You've got the stabilizer at the top there, where it's a little bit, um, so you can just put your, Joy also says you put your finger there. Uh, stability, bit of stability there. 24 pounds and 99 pence. What I love about this one is, I'll open it up again. If you're cutting something, you happen to drop it. Other rotary cutters, the blade stays out like that, and it drops like that. Whereas this one, as soon as you drop it, as soon as you let go, the blade bounces back in. But we always say, please, 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 be careful. You can, oh, you can, and now some people, when they're, when they're cutting, I think it was some, um, I think it might have been CL, who was I watching the other day? And they put it out and they lock it out like that. Oh, it might have been Amanda, it might have been Amanda, actually, it might have been Amanda. Anyway, they, they, they cut, it. they cut, so the blade is out the whole time, but then obviously you remember to put it away when you finished. 24 pounds and 99 pence. I'll put it away. Right. I'll go back over set one. What's next, then? Oh, she always picks the... I said, we won't do the Grecian cross, because it's all the way over here, but we'll do the Grecian cross next. Now, there's no... Apparently, there's no such word as Grecian. It's meant the Greek cross cushion. Right, this is the kit for the quilt. Obviously, um, this is the cushion, because remember, this was made on the birthday show. Uh, this was Lucy and I when we won our sew-off competition against uh, Victoria and Natasha. Uh, so this is, this is the block, right? But the bundle is to do the quilt. You can do the cushion as well, but you get enough fabric in the bundle to do the quilt. We haven't got a picture because obviously it was done live on air. Um, so what you get in here, now you get four metres of fabric in this one. So uh, here we go. You get half a metre of cameo, 
two meters of the teal, and half a meter, half a meter, and half a meter. So half, yeah, there you go, four meters in total. These are all Art Gallery Dolls House fabric, the three here. Beautiful, isn't it? Lovely. And then that's the finished, uh, that's the finished block, which Lucy and I made into a cushion. Spot the deliberate mistake. Um, Lucy did that bit. She put the back on wrong. I did the sewing of the front. And some of the quilting. I did one of these quilting ones. No, I didn't do the back. Lucy did the back. I've just been bitten by something. I do apologise. Right. £51.99. Now, obviously, you can make more than a cushion. You can make the whole quilt. But that's the block to make the quilt. The finished block is 12 inches. And all seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. Oh, there you go. We got it wrong. The Bargello, we said, was on at 8 o'clock. So it was on at 10 o'clock. You also get the thread in that one as well. That Bargello was on at 10 o'clock. Right. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, this is where I need to help, I think. I might be all right. Let's have a look. So many people have loved this. Remember when um, Rachel and Jamie came in to the studios that day? And they saw this quilt. I've done it now. Too late chatting. Socialising. Um, this is, no, I do need some help. Um, they came in, they saw this hanging on the wall, and um, Rachel just had to buy it. Just grab the end of that for me, would you? This is Chris, everybody, if you don't know him. Stand in front, so do it like the. No, no, like this, I can't see a T-shirt. Actually, you could do it like that, there we go. This is Chris, who's our, our no, you don't have to do it that high. This is our, who's our floor manager. Um, are you embarrassed standing there? Are you gone pink? Oh, no, it's just the reflection off that. Anyway, isn't this beautiful? I think it might be upside down, but... Oh, no, no, we're all right, we're all right. So it, have a look at the quilt. That's the finished quilt. Thank you. Oh, now, after all that, they've got a still, Chris. I do apologise. Thank you very much indeed. He's not normally that quiet or reserved, everybody, just so you know. Anyway, <coughs> when this first came uh, for sale here at Sewing Quarter, nearly said the wrong company then, um, £249. 199, 199. Look, isn't this lovely? And now I think I've only got, <laughs> right? I was going to be discreet. I've got two left. That's all I've got now. So if you've always loved this quilt and you think, I want it, I want it, I want it, there are only two left. I'm not adding any undue pressure whatsoever. What you get in here is you get eight fabrics, four printed, four woven. You get the full instructions. You see, get a lovely picture of Anna Maria. Uh, and the finished quilt. Then all the instructions are in here of how to do all the different sections. I love that echinacea fabric. And then uh, you get templates which you can use over and over again. You can iron over these. You can iron over those. They're reusable. Then the fabrics. Here are the fabrics. Look. So you've got, ooh, one job done. <laughs> You've got enough in here. Now, what you do have to do is you do have to follow the instructions of the fabrics that are... Number. Can you just put the still back up again for me? Would that be possible? No, no, of the actual quilt. You see, now this is the finished quilt. You have to make that wide one out of the blue woven. You have to make the... Um, High, not high size, your social climber. You have to make all of those columns out of those fabrics and the patterns out of those um, patterns, but you can then put them in a different order if you want to, but you do have to make. So don't be thinking, oh, I know, I'm going to put the social climber behind that one there, but only because uh, you've got exactly the right amount of fabrics to do all of those um, columns. 7th of February, 9 o'clock, we demoed this one. Thank you, Sewing Nut. Uh, you got four woven fabrics. So you got the blue woven. This, is, uh, this, this one here is um, Lucy's favourite, the orange with the lame in it. Then you've got the black with the hexes in it. Uh, not hexes, little squares in it. Then you've got the stripy one. And then you've got your four florals there. So you get everything you need to make that quilt. It's the front of the quilt, 
plus the binding. The front of the quilt plus the binding. I think you get something like 12 yards of fabric. Oh, can we see more of Chris? 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 I've got a message here saying, can we see more of Chris? He's a nice bit of eye candy. Yeah, you. So yes, your wish is our command. When, he, when he's dressed up a bit better, he's got the most beautiful wife, I can't tell you. Oh, she is flipping gorgeous. She's really, and she's with child now, isn't she? In fact, it must be due, when's it due? Oh, three months, oh, how exciting. Anyway, so I just thought he'd come in to let you know that somebody thinks you're attractive. That, uh, don't put their name on it. <laughs> oh, Hayley, Hayley, did you say it was from Hayley? Oh, oh Danny. <laughs> That is his wife. <laughs> Doesn't say who it's from. Oh, that's nice though, isn't it? Thank you, Chris, for being such a good sport. Right, uh, that's the end of me. I've only got two left though. I've only got two left. I remember putting it in your basket does not guarantee you getting it. It's only once you've checked out that you've got it. Oh, now the Grecian Cross update. Wendy's emailed in to say, Yeah, yeah, owe to the Grecian urn. Oh, if Grecian's good enough for him, it's good enough. The reason, only because the actual block isn't called a Grecian cross, it's called a Greek cross. And when I asked why we couldn't use Grecian, someone in the office said it's because there's no such name. But obviously there is, owe to the Grecian cross. Well, there's Grecian 2000, isn't there? They must have got it from somewhere. Because uh, the actual block is called the Greek cross. Anyway, so um, that's this, that's this, that's this. You get enough to make the quilt, but using all those fabrics, that's one block that you'd make for the quilt. But thank you for that. It's lovely that you're all interactive. Right, okay, so I've still got more to do, have I? Oh, right, now, this one. Did Lucy make this one? Or did Lucy, did Lucy demonstrate this one? Don't worry, what day was it on? 12th of April, on the 12th of April. Um, now, the block we've got, this one's actually from the magazine, is, is, am I right? Because our, our fabrics are slightly different to what you get in here. But I'll show you. But you do get enough fabric. If you're thinking, oh, 52 pounds for that, you get enough to make two of these. You get enough to make two of these within the, um, I'm sure that's what Hayley said yesterday. Um, how much fabric do you get? Five meters. <laughs> So, it's called the All Stars, because this, the fabric is from the All Stars range, this one. That's the frog prints. Oh, yes. You must, you must have a lot of frog left over, because you're only going to cut four. Well, if you cut one, but, you, but you're going to cut eight. To say, if you make two, you're going to cut eight frogs, aren't you? Look. And you get all of that, frog-wise. Hannah's going to make big floor cushions out of hers. So anyway, you get half a metre, you get five metres of fabric. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You must get more of some of them. So you get half a metre of the frog prints. You get half a metre of the pom-pom. Half a metre of aqua. Half a metre of optical white. Half a metre of mint. Half a metre of pearl blue. Right, then you get a metre of grass and a metre of citrus. So you get a metre of each of these two and then half a metre of everything else. And you get the thread and you get the instructions. Now, I'm sure you can make two out of that bundle. Oh, it's Nicole Calver's pattern, this, Nicole Calver. She's not been on the show, has she, Nicole Calver? But all her, instruct oh, all her details are in there. I've left my glasses over the other side, so I can't read them to you. But the instructions and all her details are in there. Beautiful, isn't it? Okay. Beautiful collection of fabrics, that together. I'll just hold this one up for you one more time. Because obviously in ours, in the one we've done, we haven't got those star fabrics. We've put different fabrics in there. But you can make your mind up. Making your mind up. You can choose where you put your fabrics. 
Oh, uh, now, I'm wondering if there's enough for the back then as well. So you can make two of those plus the backing. That's brilliant. OK, so that goes there, that goes there, that goes there. That goes, oh, bottom shelf. The teddy bear one. This is nice. Now, this, this comes from, oh. You don't get the instructions for this one. This, because this one's from a book. So you get a metre of the fabric, a 12-piece fat quarter, and the thread. I'll show you here. So you get a metre of the, um, is it cream, vanilla? You get the thread, ivory, and then you get this lovely fat quarter here. But sadly, you don't get the instructions with this one. It comes from a book. It comes from that book that's got the hearts and the what's it one in, hasn't it? And I think you can make... I'm not going to say anything because I don't know. £57.99. Lovely colours. You want that fat quarter bundle and the fabric there and the thread. Maybe you don't want to make the teddy bear one. We're just showing you the teddy bear one there because that's what they used to make it. I'm, I'm, but it, I remember it being in a book now, so I do apologise about that. Oh, now Shamoy Mary's made this one, this next one. It's foundation paper piecing, and she loved it. Now, Shamoy Mary, she's a friend of mine, and um, she hadn't done sewing since she made an apron in junior school about 60 years, uh, 40 years ago. And then she tried to make a Joe Carter, she made a Joe Carter cat to start with, and it was lovely, but a bit wonky like that. Then she made a handbag, and then she made a unicorn. And then she loves this, right? And she said, well, I'll give it a go. I won't be able to do it. She's hooked. She's completely and utterly hooked now. She loves foundation paper piecing. And that's what this one's all about. The only thing she couldn't do, and this is not a, a skill, is her OCD, would, this is her words, not mine, wouldn't let her do random. So all of her balloons have matching colours on the outside, then the matching colour there, and then a colour in the middle. They're different, but they're all the same, if you know what I mean. Like, she can't do random. Her, her brain won't let her do random. But it looks gorgeous, and I love the colours. OK, so you've got, you get, what you get in here is you get your template for the balloon. That's your template for the balloon. And then this one here... Is your temp are your templates for the basket and the strands going to the ropes going to the basket? Um, now, what you get in here, look at this, so beautiful, isn't it? What you get in here is half a metre of all the fabric. So half a metre purple, half a metre blue, half a metre green, half a metre of pink, half a metre of yellow, half a metre of red, half a metre of the other blue, half a metre of the orange, half a metre of the spot, and then what? one, two, three, four. Yeah, four and a, you get four and a half of these and then two metres of the white. 5th of March is when this was done. 5th of March. It's a brilliant demo to watch if you've not done... Oh, now, which one? Whose is the 5th of March one? Oh, don't we? Because um, if you watch, we've done it twice on air or three times on air, and each time... Each expert does it slightly differently because different. Angie, when Angie does uh, foundation paper piecing, she does it completely differently to everybody else. And that's not wrong. It's not wrong at all. It's just different methods of doing it. Forty nine ninety nine. Though I think it's brilliant. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Sorry. This is me looking at the lovely picture. There's not enough for the backing. There's just enough for the um, for the front and the binding. But look, it's lovely, isn't it? This one's got different fabrics in, apparently. Has it? Oh, yeah, because that's got stars on the basket. This is the one from the magazine. And it's got what? No, no, the spots are for the... the, spots are for the 
for the basket. There's had stars on. Also, we haven't got that, that lavender, I don't think. In some, it doesn't, this is one that they did as, as, as example for the um, magazine. So that's the same. That's this one on the front of the pattern there. OK, this is what you get. Six and a half metres of fabric, instructions and thread. Fabulous. Yes. Oh, I've got fewer than 10 of these now. Fewer than 10 of these now. This is the half and home quilt. So you get like, the pattern and the instructions. It's by Nicola Dodd, who was in... Oh, I see what the triangle's for now. The triangle's for around the, the border. There you go. Um, thorough, thorough, thorough instruct. Oh. OK, if everybody checks out, there's three left. Once everyone's checked out, there are now three left. If you've got it in your basket, please, I won't be getting this again. We'll not be getting this again as far as we're aware. So in the pattern, it's made with a different bundle of fabrics. But so what you get in here is you get uh, five and a half metres of fabric. Sorry about this, it's an error there. You get five and a half metres of fabric. Hannah can't change that. So you get half a metre of the uh, two um, bijou fabrics. Half a metre of both of those. You get a metre of the marine, and then you get... Oh, hang on. One, two, three. Three and a half. I'm just trying to add it. Three and a half of the vanilla. You get the thread, and then you get these, all these beautiful... Uh, from the Kelmscott range. Right, now, an awful lot of you... I've got it in your basket. If you do want it, you do need to check out. I don't want to add any undue pressure. I'm just saying because I don't want anyone to miss out. 14th of April, this was on with Nicola Dodd. So you get this 12-piece fat quarter. Uh, then for some reason, there's one of these, which is from the, Mo the, the um, Merton range. It's meant to be there. It's meant to be there, but I think they just need an extra one. And because all of this went... Excuse me, when we created this, that was the last of the Kelmscott fabric available. Got the, straw, the strawberry uh, thief in there as well. £99.99. And 99 pence. Beautiful, isn't it? Really, really lovely quilt. Should we just look at the picture of the quilt again? Sorry. There it is. That one's made of different fabrics, but you can get the idea of what it's going to look like. It's beautiful, isn't it? OK, it's like a log cabin, but with um, a log cabin. Oh, OK. More people now have it in their baskets than we've got um, available. So if you do want it, please check out, because if you're a new buyer, it's not yours until you've checked out your basket. OK. Oh, no, I'm afraid uh, the Bargello uh, instructions are not sold separately. It's something we are working on in the future, but at the moment, it's not, they're not sold separately, I'm afraid. This is this, is this, this beautiful Bargello here. £80.99 for the bundle. You get the fat quarter, the anthology fat quarter. Now, um, I don't know if you can see it, so I wonder if I'm allowed to take one of these out. Oh, that one's just come out. It just fell out, yeah. Um, if you've not seen, if you've not seen the anthology one before, look. Oh, Chris is here now. Remember, Chris the eye candy. Oh, now little Paul will be furious because he thinks, he thinks he's the only eye candy in the building at the moment. It's so funny. He said, I never look at the Facebook page. I never look at this. And then someone mentioned in the office, oh, I've had 472 likes and 52 messages, actually. And I was like, oh, OK, Paul. And then he went, don't you mention that on air. Don't you tell people on air, which means tell everybody on air. Uh, so you get the fat quarter bundle. Fat quarter bundle. You get the three half metres of designer fabric. You get the two threads. And you get the um, instructions. And this, this is the most important thing. I'll show, oh, wait, that's the bundle there. But this is the chart that Jane did for all the sizes that you need to cut. I'll move it around so you can't photocopy it. OK. 
night. <gasps> yes, fewer than 15 of those now. It's because the fat quarters, isn't it? Lovely. OK. So now, hang on, there's a few things I need to ask. Oh, yes. Right. No! There's one Anna Maria left. That's it. There is one Ah, yes. Not her herself, her quilt. There's only one of these left in the whole company. We'll not be getting it again. So if you want it, this really is your last, last, last chance now. Here it is all done. It's a funny picture, though. It's a funny picture, isn't it? Because it's kind of a bit skew with. Did you take that picture, Hannah? She's not that cool, apparently. Right, OK. Anything else I need to say, Pogo? My airborne quilt. OK, fewer than five of these. I knew it. Fewer than five of those. I love the rainbow colours. Hopefully, we'll be able to rebundle it in the future, but at the moment, I've only got five left. Oh, look at my shirt. I'll just move my shirt. No, hang on. Okay, there are now more people in baskets than are available for that one. 49.99. You get all your fabrics and your instructions and your thread. 49.99. Right, don't go anywhere. Claire Louise is back in the building. We're doing a Claire Louise roundup masterclass, whatever you want to call it. She's just going to be in charge. I'm just going to sit and watch the master at work. Uh, I'll see you in three minutes from now. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Throw kisses to the missus as we bring you a brand new stylish jacket pattern, the McCall's Mrs. Jacket. On Sunday the 22nd of April at 8am, Amanda Wyatt is in the studio sharing her tips and tricks with you to make this wearable and comfy piece in some utterly divine crepe fabrics. This daywear jacket can be tweaked to perfection. Add flared sleeves, extend the jacket to skim you at mid-length or crop it at the hip. From maroons to powder blue, we've put together a selection of linings and crepes to suit your outfit choice. So be sure to watch Amanda's jacket making workshop on Sunday, the 22nd of April at 8 a.m. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. So we're going to show you how to do a back stitch. Now a back stitch is a great one to use when you haven't got a sewing machine available um, but you need to repair or fix a garment and the back stitch is a really strong stitch to do that with. First of all you need to start with the wrong side of the fabric first. So I'm just going to place my needle through to bring it through through to the front and then you're going to go backwards. So I'm going to do quite big stitches here so you can see what I'm doing. So that's the first stitch. Now this time you're going to come and bring your needle through but the same distance as your stitch and then you're going to go into the first hole that you came out and then go back through to the back and then I'm going to come all the way over again the same distance and then through again and just keep repeating that process. my final stitch now. So as you can see there's my row of back stitches and if I just turn that over for a second you can see that it's almost as if it's double stitched along the back so you can see it's a really secure stitch to do when you haven't got a sewing machine to hand. There are many ways you can watch Sewing Quarter. We are live every day on Freeview Channel 78 and online at sewingquarter.com from 8am till 12 noon. But if you've missed a show, don't worry, there are two easy ways to catch up. The first is through our website, www.sewingquarter.com, where we repeat that morning's shows throughout the day. On the homepage, you'll see our video stream. Click on the video to hear sound and see a list of the products that we have shown in that day's shows. The second way to catch up is on our YouTube channel. All our shows are kept on YouTube, so if you buy a product and want to see the demonstration again, you can. 
Go to www.youtube.com forward slash sewing quarter where you'll find all our shows listed by date. Select your preferred date. Then, using the description beneath the video, jump to the hour you want to watch. Then you can pause, rewind, play and skip your way to the bits that you want to watch again. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Never mind going to the market, we think this little piggy is going to steal your heart. The latest softie from fabulous toy maker Joe Carter was first seen in Simply Sewing magazine and is the prettiest pink piglet we have ever seen. Made from super soft pink fleecy fabric, this piglet will make the perfect present for a little one or simply add to your own collection of super huggable soft toys. So, be sure not to miss out on Joe's Pink Piglet on Friday the 27th of April at 9am. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. She's back. She's back. We get so many messages <laughs> and emails when you want your grillo. Oh, it's so nice so to see you. So now, why are you late? Not late. She's not late. We always knew. Why are you doing? Why are you doing the last two hours? Because then? I wasn't. I'm. I wasn't supposed to be doing this. Is the last minute. And well, no, we always. We've always had you booked. But no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and because it was easy, I had things to do last night, so I travelled up this morning. Sorry, guys. Things to do. Wasn't it yoga with champagne or something you were doing yesterday? Well, no, it's Aperol you Spritz in the afternoon to and yoga. No, but yeah. I had some. I had an event to go to yesterday. Did you? Yeah. Did you have a nice time? I did. Could you inside and out at the Fashion and Textile oh, Museum? Oh wow! That's where you get they get old clothes, isn't it? Old designer, not old vintage, vintage. classic vintage. vintage couture. But turn them inside out yeah. so you can see how everything's yeah. made and how everything was done. And it's was it fantastic? Yeah, I've been. I've done it before, but you can always learn more. So oh, no, of course. There was like Dior, and there was the dress that Halle Berry wore to her Oscar. You know when she won, and it was just just incredible. So oh wow! And I'm such a geek. You kind of looking at how they did the zips, and you know. Really beautiful. Well, after that, you could bring in some of your old frocks and we could turn them inside out and say how they're made. <laughs> anyway, let's get let's get on. So, so if you've got any questions, you don't mind answering any questions? No, I love answering oh, questions. Oh, now, 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 now. I answered quite a few questions, but there was one I didn't answer. Yeah. And I know you've had a really busy week. Yeah. But we had our ladies, I can't remember, in Birmingham. I know they're in Birmingham, but the lady had their name at the end of the thing and I can't remember. I'd, about... If you've got junk an S back, a, 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 a what, what? Junk in the trunk. Yeah, okay, junk in the <laughs> trunk. If you want to put it like that. I haven't answered that one yet. No, I've, I've got some stuff so we can answer it after the show. There you go, there you go, <laughs> perfect. So that's fantastic because they'll be watching. There's a group of ladies in Birmingham watching, having a lovely, lovely time. Ah. And we got so many lovely messages about Aww. you. So, um, Anyway, what we're going to do today is just a roundup, really, of, yeah. because a lot of people might have missed your first show or might have missed your last show. So we're just going to do a roundup and also uh, little things that we might have missed out from okay. shows in the past. And you've got demos. We've got two hours, so we're doing it over the two over the two hours. Also including some of the tools you always use yeah. and sort of things like just going to have two hours of questions, going over it and just having a nice time. But before we do anything, before we talk about the book, we've got the PU Rose Gold back in stock. Yes, I know. <laughs> Every, when we brought this to you last time, <laughs> it flew, flew, flew out the door. It's back in stock today. I don't know if you want to put the graphics in yet or you want to wait. Mm. We'll put the graphics in now. <laughs> waft it then if you're going to hold it. You want me to waft it? Yeah. Obviously, what you're seeing here is half a metre. I could hold this, hold this in I'm, your arm. I'm a bit little. As as <laughs> Look how wide it is. Look how wide it is. It's a beautiful, isn't it? It's rose gold. Now, it's 50% viscose, 50% PU. Uh, it says leather in the, in the graphics. There is no leather in it. It's not an animal made, you know, there's nothing animal no. in it, sort of thing. Um, 6.25, half metre. The quality's good, isn't it? It's great, and it is so nice to sew with. I mean, that's the thing with a lot of PU, is sometimes it can be tricky to sew with, but this just sews like a dream. I've got other colours as well. 
but we just thought this, when we had this last time, it was one of those fabrics that went, 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 went out the door. So we just thought we'd talk about that first. <laughs> Is it my colour? Maybe, yeah, well, maybe on the bottom. I think, it, pardon? I think but it's everybody's <laughs> colour though, isn't it? Yeah. It's a perfect spring jacket. Oh no, you see, I think if you made a jacket out of it and then had another colour here. Yeah, put a little band. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Hannah's not having a jacket, she's having a bag made out of it. Well, I want, I want to make a little wiggle skirt. Oh, do you? Yeah. And a wiggle skirt's in your book, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, well fun, perfect. You're very good at doing those segues, aren't you? <laughs> Which is the first thing we're going to talk about, really. This book from the Great British Sewing Bee uh, has been a fantastic seller, but even more so since you have been on with it. What is your connection with this book? I wrote this book. <laughs> Just simple. I wrote this book. This so is my it first book. It should have your picture on the front, really. Well, no, it's a, it's a it's a format book, so it's connected to a well-known TV show about well, sewing. Well, it's a bit of a giveaway. Yeah, it's the, the Great, Great British, British Sewing, sewing Bee. <laughs> <laughs> so now, so now you were you were an integral part. For yeah. those who don't know, you were integral part of the Great British Sewing Bee, weren't yeah. you? So I'm the uh, sewing producer. So I'm responsible for all the sewing content in the show of which there's rather a lot. Well, considering <laughs> the whole show is sewing, <laughs> yeah. then it's quite... And now, is it like normal telly? Is it very, very well organised? Or is it on the last day that something go, oh, we'd like to do a, I don't know, something rather complicated, and you've then got um, to get it all ready, haven't you? Yeah. So um, we had a lot less surprises in the last series because... Um, but quite often, people will have an idea at half six in the morning and they go, oh, do you think you could just show us how to do a zip fly? And then we turn over at eight and so you're, like, sitting there trying to do samples and get ready for the day, so... So did we ever see you? Did we ever see no, you on the show? never saw me. I was always behind the camera with the cameraman, usually whispering, saying, you want to go over there and have a look and see what they're doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what she said, <laughs> but she's basically telling the cameraman, don't look at that bit. Look at the bit I do like this, going, no, over here, Michael, over there, Michael. <laughs> she was just a bit more discreet about it. Tell me what's in the book and why we should get it. OK, so um, I have got a lot of clothes from this book myself. So the idea of the book, some of the projects are from this series. So this was series three. And then we kind of designed it to showcase fabric so that the designs are fairly simple. Um, but you can pick lots of different fabrics. So it's also a little bit of a capsule wardrobe. Oh, OK. Um, which was something that I wanted to do. So there's actually 15 full-size patterns. Right. Yeah. On five pattern sheets. Right. So this, this, is a, this one's a bit messy, because we had this one open so many times. This isn't the one we've let you out, because she goes through it with her scissors. <laughs> right. But basically, this comes with the book, right? So you get this extra... It's not even an envelope, is it? A little folder. Yeah. And then it, on all these pages... Now, this is why you can't cut them out, because you do need to trace them off, don't yeah, you? Yeah, unless you want to cut up six books' worth of... Well, yes. Who would do recommend? that? A crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> so, all of the patterns for, for how many projects? For 15? Well, no, there are 15 patterns, right. but there are 28 projects. So, on these five pages here, there are 15 full patterns yeah. for... Uh, um, projects in the yeah. book and obviously it's got the different sizes and as you can see it's got the different they're all different colors they all overlap each other which is why you then have to sit and and trace them off um oh loads of messages welcoming you back oh uh, morning <laughs> morning some of us have been here since six darling <sighs> anyway it's light, you know, it's light at that time in the morning i know i could see hannah running down her lane it was morning. light at five when i got up where were you at five o'clock I was coming from London. And it was light? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a bit odd. Anyway, it is there odd, were, isn't it? There so, were clubbers outside. Oh, no, that is frightening. <laughs> that is frightening when you're driving into work and all the people still clubbing yeah. are going to the next club, you know, Walk five uh, So, projects in so the book. So, project-wise, there's um, the first sort of chapter, we've got a whole bunch of... You always have these in, in kind of sewing books. So, some basics to tell you how to use the patterns, how to measure yourself, what our measurement charts are. Oh, that was going to be my next question, because a lot of people will say, before I buy the book, I need to know what size the patterns go up to. So, it goes up to a size 20, which is closer to a ready-to-wear 20 than to a 
pattern 20. Right. So that means if we look down here, I'm upside down. So it goes up to a 45 inch bust. So go by you go by the measurements, yeah. not shop sizes. Not by your shop yeah. size, but these are closer to shop sizes yes. than say a McCall's. Right. So um, it's done in, in kind of fabric chapters because that's the focus that they wanted for this book. And so the first one is kind of like cotton where you would get started with your dressmaking. And then we've got kind of glossary of little terms. And then the very first project is a nice little simple shell top. Right. So if you're new to dressmaking, this is a great place to start. And then the second project is a version of this. So it's a hack, which is basically using the same pattern piece, but you um, change it up a bit. Right. And this one, has got buttons down the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you, so it's getting so the first one's for an ab absolute beginner. Yeah. Get your confidence doing that. Now try this one. Yeah, yeah. Thing, and this good. is nice because you can showcase a really nice summer fabric. It's got a different technique. So the idea was to bring in new techniques without bringing in new patterns all the time. Yes. Because each time you bring in a pattern, you've got to fit. And then we go into one of my favourite projects which is just a really simple pair of trousers. Brilliant. And um, we I should love... have made that. We should have made... We should have made those like we did the I trouser um, yeah. uh, last week. Trouser two hour spectacular. Maybe we should. We'll do and what I love time. about this is every often people get obsessed with pattern matching and particularly on the show because they have to have something to talk about. Yes. Like you can't talk about soggy bottoms. Not our, not our show. We're talking about, you're talking about yeah, the this, this yeah, yeah. show. Yeah, this show. And so everyone was like, oh, she hasn't matched her pattern across the crotch. But you can't really with this. What she did do is she looked at the directionality and it's got like spirals. Like a helter skelter. Yeah. Which was something that she did deliberately. And yes, so you can play yeah. with fabric. So was that made by one of the contestants? That was so? made by one of the contestants. Yeah, okay. one of my favourites. Yeah. And one of your favourite contestants. Yeah. You're not allowed to say that. They're all my favourites. Yeah, thank you. But in that particular category and oh, that particular okay. yeah. Um, well so covered. these are a nice, simple pair of trousers to introduce you to trousers. Yeah. And then this is so cute. I actually have a version of this. Have you got a little girl? No, I don't wear it myself. Oh. <laughs> I've got an adult size. <laughs> so this is um, something you don't need a pattern for. It's just two rectangles. Oh, so you could make it for anybody. Yeah. Yes. Right. And um, so we've done it as a child's version and then we've done uh, with a kind of floaty lawn. OK, because we had those lovely lawns in which yeah, we've yeah, reordered. Yeah. But um, has that got uh, shearing elastic? It has, yeah. which is a great technique and used in all kinds of places. I use it a lot for alterations. But yes. um, so that was and then this was also made by a contestant. And this was a pattern that has a very, very big history. Um, it's called the walk away. Right. And the idea was that you started it in the morning and then you would walk away to lunch in it. Oh, wearing it? Yeah. Oh, OK. Blimey. So the contestant sewed this in four hours. H Hannah said, is she having lunch the next day in the <laughs> evening? <laughs> no, so it's, you know, it's a, it is doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's almost like a kind of apron. Right, oh, OK. Um, in the way that it's constructed. And we changed the pattern for this in the book. So if you get the book version, we fitted it to the modern mannequin because obviously it's a 50s pattern. Right. So the boobs were a bit high yes. and a bit pointy. Yeah. Um, it's just a nice summer dress. It's frightening, isn't it, that we always talk about how people's bodies have changed from Elizabethan times, Victorian times, everything, but from the 50s. I know. You know what I mean? That's in some people's lifespan, do you know what I mean? Well, we don't wear foundation garments anymore, so no. our waists are kind of a lot wider than they would have been. It, it, but also it's really weird because we do go for comfort, don't we? And um, Glamorous Gladys, who lives next door to my brother <laughs> in, on the Wirral, <laughs> she's 97, 98 now, and, but she dresses every day like you'd think she was going out somewhere. You go, really? Oh, Gladys, where are you going to take her? Nowhere. Every morning Aww. she's made up, she's got her jewellery on, she's got her... And she goes, they live down this little lane, and the amount of times I've driven down the lane and I've seen Gladys then, you go, oh, Gladys, get in, get in, I'll take you home. And she went, no, I'm going for my walk. Don't, you yeah. know, don't make me get in the car. But she's in, like, little, little Chanel-esque jackets and little skirts, and she's got gorgeous, really beautifully cut trousers. Her shoes are always matching. Uh, you know what I mean? It's a yeah. different, completely it's a different, different, era. different era, isn't I it? I think we've got sloppy, and I think fashion's got sloppy yes. as well. And I don't know whether we've gotten used to comfort or whether that's what we've been given and that's what we accept. Yes. So yeah. it's, it's... But, but that's exactly what it is. It, when I was younger, it wouldn't be acceptable to wear... No stretchy, you know, like a tracksuit or a hoodie or anything like no. that to go out in. You'd get changed to go out. Yeah. And now 
a hoodie or something is acceptable wear yeah. for anything really. Trucky bottoms with yeah. heels. Yeah. Don't like that look. Well, no, I don't do the heel bit. Really. <laughs> um, so jumpsuit. Th this is a jumpsuit and that was um, a project. So the whole concept of this book I sold on the jumpsuit, okay. which is like a three in onesie because we've got three different versions of this. So you can use the same pattern pieces to make the jumpsuit, which is super easy. It's just got a gathered waist. And I saw a jumpsuit yesterday on this girl. I'm trying to take a picture in the street, but it looked a bit weird. I mean, I looked a bit weird doing that. You just stop her and ask her. You say I'm a scout, I'm a scout, <laughs> darling. But they had, um, her jumpsuit had a shearing elastic panel, which gave it a really refined waist rather than just a single elastic. Oh, so I'm yes. gonna have a little play with oh, that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you take the same pattern and you can use the top half and make yourself a little cami Which top. Which we're gonna do, when we get those lovely lawns back, we're gonna do that in, the, in one of those lawns, beautiful. So this is a Liberty silk. So it's a, if you've never sewn silk before, a cami top like this is a great way to get started with silk yeah. because it does have darts, but it's not too fiddly to sew. Um, and then you can take... I was shocked when I first started dressmaking though that um, I think all oh, silk is a natural fabric, but it actually makes, can make you sweat a lot, can't oh, yeah, it, silk? Yeah. You know what I mean? well, it's, it's not like a breathable cotton. It's thermal, so it's the best thing to wear if you want to climb Everest. Well, well I have to say, yeah. a lot of the... When, when I did the Bond films, I think we yeah. had to buy thermals for all the actors. They all had silk yeah. thermals, sort of thing, yeah. So, I mean, I've made that mistake when you go on a summer day. Yeah, in <laughs> and, silk. And in silk, and you're like, oh, no. Um, and then you can use the bottom half and make these trousers. So, again, these are kind of like a casual, smart casual trouser. Yes, yeah. Um, and what else oh, have no, we got? Running to Hannah's boyfriend now. <laughs> one of, one <laughs> of Hannah's boyfriends. So these are just, because obviously um, the book has to cover not just beginners, because the viewer for the sewing bee isn't just beginners. Well, it's like, like our viewers. We have exactly. people who are just starting and people who could exactly. totally out sew all of yeah. us. You know what I mean? And, and so you <clears> have <throat> to have something a bit chunky for the people who've got really good skills. Mm. So that's why we put these in. So now, were they not part of the competition no. then? They were in the book we're going to be yeah. aiming for other people as yeah. well. So, you put so we have to have a few, we need to kind of balance it across children's wear, ladies wear, men's wear. So um, people tend to make more for themselves, but they do make for their mm. husbands or their sons or, you know, family members. I've actually worn these. Or Hannah's these. boyfriend. <laughs> I've worn those exact shorts. Hannah says, were you at the photo shoot? I was in the morning, but not all day. Oh, so you haven't got his number for Hannah or no, anything? No, oh, never no. Mind. Um, his man from CNA, we call him. Oh, OK. <laughs> Coats and hats. But that's like a really nice, meaty project if you want. If you're a kind of intermediate sewer and you want to up your skills, it will teach you about a fly. And we've got the uh, gusseted pockets. So um, there wouldn't have been time to make it in the show. No, exactly. But also, as you say, not everybody is... A, 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 a beginner, you know, to me. Well, the thing is, on the t on the show, the challenges have to fit a certain time frame, so yes, yeah. certain things don't make it, unfortunately. No, of course not, no. uh, so that's all the cargo. <gasps> oh, I love this. Yeah. Isn't I love the ace? fabric, but, yeah. it, it, but, it, but that's isn't that made from an old pair of curtains? Or yeah. Something like that? So this was the um, vintage curtain week. So basically, it was going to be originally gone with the wind. And it was going to be kind of like velvet curtains, you know, when she pulls yes, it back. Yes, 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 yes. But we found out that another show was doing something similar. Oh. Like a few weeks before we started filming, it went on air. And so it kind of went round to Sound of Music. So we had all these like oh, okay. border prints and 50s. And so they ripped down the curtains and had to turn it into something. And again, this is the lady who made the trousers before. Oh, okay. It's just really Your stylish. It's funny she's in the book twice, isn't no, it? No, it's not that. Um, she was a finalist in this series. Oh, okay. And it's just a really stylish make, mm. I think. And she didn't have a pattern. She made this in an hour and a half. It started off as a pair of curtains. So, you know, and again, it just sort of um, gives you an opportunity to learn a really basic bit of drafting. So you just uh, cut out using those kind of measurements for your own. And then, you know, some more skills. So we talk about a waistband and a zip. Um, and then we go on to wool right. and sort of natural fibres. Mm -hmm. So this is where the projects get a bit more complicated. So in each of the sections, um, I did a lot of research about fabric properties and how you use them and what kind of things. And there's a kind of like a check list of like how to work with it, what sort of needles. Also, some of the projects you don't have to make 
like the cami top out of silk. You did it out of silk, but you could make it out of lawn. Yeah, yeah. And it's like when we get to our PU jacket, yeah. you were saying that can be made out of wool or tweed or yeah. something like that. As um, well, so there's it. actually two versions of that. One is tweed with some PU and one is... So that was the whole thing, is to give people the inspiration to think, well, these are basic shapes, like a capsule wardrobe. Mm -hmm. Pick your own fabric, become your own designer. Don't just go with what yeah. we've done. And the capsule wardrobe, for those who don't know the, the terminology, I used to do it all the time this morning, it's where you have a wardrobe, you can have as few items as you like, but everything goes yeah. with, with everything. So you've got a fabulous party skirt, you've got a lovely white blouse, you've got a decent pair of trousers, you've got a nice jacket, and then you can mix and match them. And being a capsule wardrobe, you know they all fit because you've designed them or bought them all, you know they all go together. <clears throat> you work at that and then you add, you embellish the capsule wardrobe. So what we've done here, because obviously the chapters have moved on in kind of, like, you need a little bit more handling skills when you start getting to use wool because it stretches. So these are tools that are nice to have but not essential. So um, things like the leather roller for mm -hmm. the seam and the clapper to push oh, the steam yes, through yeah. and a seam roll and a tailor's ham. So whenever you're steaming and pressing wool, you kind of want to shrink some fabric away. Now, you see, I, before I came here, I'd never even seen a rotary cutter yeah. because dressmaking, it was just this all the time. So I'm shocked to see a rotary cutter in in a dressmaking book. Currently. It's because a lot of home sewers might prefer, might feel more comfortable using a rotary cutter for leather. Right, so, so that's only in for this section, that's yeah, not in for mainly but, the whole book. No, so you don't need that as your basic, but some people yeah. who come from a quilting background, they still prefer to dressmake oh, with these. Yes, yeah. well Amanda, who does a lot of our jersey dresses, she, Cut. She's like yeah. this with her rotary cutter. You kind of need two. You need a big one and then you need a smaller one for the curves. So, or you could just stay with your scissors like I do. Yeah. <laughs> and the, um, so that was. Um, oh, so now. Oh, no, this is, uh, this is the t shirt, not the yeah. wiggle skirt. I thought so, we were this was a, uh, it's actually a beautiful silk. It's from Soho Silk. So, oh, okay. a beautiful price mm -hmm. tag. Um, and this is like your basic tee that you can make in all kinds of stuff. And then the next version of it, so it's bringing in sleeves, yeah. simple sleeve insertion, is a kind of dress version. Right. It's not this one. No, no. Um, similar. But this one, you know, we've kind of given you a bit of a shaped hem, so you've got a side zip. But this is the kind of dress that once you've made it and you know it fits, you're yeah. going to make it in every fabric, in every colour, because yeah. you know it's going to become your staple favourite, isn't it? You know? It is. And this one, um, I've still got this sample, which I put a big gusset down the back so I could wear it for a photo shoot. OK. Um, and, and I put on a bit more weight, so now I'm going to make it sleeveless. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Um, Fewer than 25 of the books left now. Ooh. They're flying out. They're absolutely flying out. Right, OK, leather so jacket. now we, we'll stop in the book for now because okay. we've gone on to leather jacket, mm -hmm. but you've actually made it. Should we... Oh, right, uh, on the 10th of March, March, 10th of March, you met, you did the green, the, yeah. the workshop in the green jacket. Now, should we do fabrics over here first or should we go and talk about the jacket first? Let me just do the fabrics first, then we can go over to the main, to the main workroom. So, again, this is brand new in today. Want some help? Thank you. This is the rose gold one. Isn't it beautiful? Now, you don't have to make the jacket that we're about to show you out of it. You can make a wiggle skirt out of it. Yeah. You can use it for bags. You can use it for so many different things. Trousers? Do what? Trousers. Trousers? Oh. Mm. Mm. You've got your, your viscose lining, so the lining is breathable here. And then you've also got the PU. There's no, it says leather in the graphics there. There's no leather in it whatsoever. Just tell me about the stock update. OK, so we haven't even really talked about it yet, and 50 units have gone already. That's how popular it is. Wow. It's beautiful. So that's the rose gold. Then we've got it in lots of other colours, which I'll just whiz through. I'll fold and you oh, can oh, you waft. All right, then. Oh, brilliant. Right, OK, so shall I just start at this end, or do you want to tell me the colour start? OK, so I've got maroon, first of all. I think it's called maroon. It's like... Uh, yeah, it is maroon, there you go. Uh, 625, half metre. They're all uh, 60 inches wide. That all the, it is like, um, what colour would you call that? It's kind of like a plum, isn't That's, it? Yeah, exactly. Deep plum. Victoria plum. OK, then I'm going on to black. Oh, now. The, the back of this, I haven't seen noticed that before. It's almost like a charcoal black, isn't it? Yeah, it's a gorgeous colour, but also the back of it. Uh, they put a black backing on it, which I think is fantastic, because lots of times they make this, put it with the creamy coloured mm. backing, and then it, you kind of sometimes see it through, don't you? <gasps> oh, that's... That, do you know what? That feels... I know it's not leather. I don't know why I'm sniffing it, but 
That does not feel like buttery soft leather. Yeah. That would make a great pair of trousers. That would be fantastic. I think I'm it? having a midlife because I want to make a pair of faux leather trousers. Okay. If you make me a pair of shorts at the same time, <laughs> then that's fine. Okay. I'll fold. That's oh sorry, you're folding, yeah. Uh, then I've got now, is this called olive or bottle? Bottle green, they call this one. <clears throat> but it is more like an olivey green, that one, like a khaki green. Beautiful. That's what then, the jacket's in, isn't it? Oh, that's what the jacket's yeah. in, yeah, that we're going to see as we go over now. And then we've got the very, very pale, uh, dusty pink. Mm. So I know this bit's boring, but we'll get on with the... Um, we've got two hours with... Uh, <laughs> pale pink it is. Pale pink. OK. Then I've got uh, duck egg blue. Now, um... We made the jacket in another cut. You, it was before I you. I demoed in that one. Oh, that, that's why yeah. I recognised that one. You demoed in that one. And then we also, uh, did we make it in a gold or a silver, I think, last time, before the time before that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then I've got navy blue, which is gorgeous as well. I'm, oh, I'm not, you really, when you see leather, leather, I'm not really keen on navy blue leather, but for some reason this PU looks lovely in it. I think it's the texture in it, because it can look a bit shiny and flat, can't it, navy yes, blue leather? Yeah. But it's a really lovely blue. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Mm, okay, God, just a couple more. Okay, that can go in. <laughs> this is the pile to go back in the warehouse. This isn't the pile for you to take home, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, then I've got this one. Now, uh, do they call this one beige? They do. I hate that word. I think it's we more of a just... camel. Hmm? It's more of a camel. It is, but I hate the word biscuit, I'd call it. But I hate the word beige. Yeah. Uh, very... Right, very limited. I've only got four metres of that left. Just so you know. We will reorder it, hopefully. We'll reorder it, hopefully. Then I've got, like, a... Oh, load my fault, you're not good enough. Uh, I'd say this was, like, a peppermint green. Oh, green. Just called green, that one. It's... It's a very, very soft peppermint green, that one. It's definitely green spearminty, yep, yeah, thank you. And then last but not least... Ooh. Now, what was they call this one elephant? It's new, isn't it? Could just be grey, won't it? Grey! I'll tell a story about when I was, I'm not saying say which actor it was, I fitted a famous actor once, and he came in and I said, oh, that's an unusual jacket, what's that made of? It was elephant skin. <gasps> and I, I refused to fit him. I walked out the fitting and I said, I'm sorry, I can't fit you if you're in an elephant oh. skin jacket. I oh, know. That's why I'm not saying who it is. <laughs> uh, and I didn't work with him again afterwards, so it's just as well. Uh, £6.25, half a metre. Right, so th this is not elephant. This is grey, and it's PU and viscose. Right, so we'll leave all those there. Mm -hmm. I'll take this with me. We'll take our book with us, and we'll take a stand with us. Right, so we're just going to um, talk you through a few of the projects that uh, CL's made from the book. And the first one... In fact, this was your first show you did with us, it wasn't was. it? It was. My very first show. And we gave you a... A, a leather jacket. Uh, but it's gorgeous. It's totally and utterly gorgeous, isn't it? This is it in the bottle green. Can you imagine what that would look like in the rose gold? You see, this, you see, this one, you're going to look like sort of biker chic during the day, and then in, if you did it in the rose gold at night time, it would look stunning, wouldn't mm. it? Really, really lovely. So what are you going to tell us about this, then? Well, I might need you to get our lovely Chris to oh. get my cut-out bits of leather that I stitched together ready for top stitching. OK. And then <laughs> the the other area. Room. OK. But one thing that I wanted to talk about for the top stitching... Yes. ..is that sometimes you can't always get the right colour in the top stitch thread. Right. Or if you're going to make rose gold, you don't necessarily want to buy a whole roll of rose gold top stitch that's just going to sit in your cupboard. Yes. But there's a kind of little trick that we can do for this. Oh, OK. That I use a lot for jeans. You know, that kind of yellow colour that's yes. hard to get in okay. a top stitch. Um, and that is a dual thread on top. Oh, OK, that's why the top's still open. Yeah. OK. Um, so when Chris comes in with your bits, well, can we just talk about the make of the jacket yeah. before we talk about the top stitch? Then Chris can bring your... Oh, here he is. Is that it? Yeah. Thank you. You can come in, cos he's at eye candy. The ladies <laughs> think he's at... Well, we... Oh, and it wasn't his wife? Oh, and with her hormones at the moment, you shouldn't have admitted to that one. <laughs> uh, thank you, it's just back on the table there. So, um, to make this the project, the pattern is all in the book. Yeah. And is it quite simple? 
or is, are there things we have to really look out for? There's a few things to look out for. So this is not really a project if you've never made a garment before. Right. You really want to have had a go at a few garments. So you've got an open-ended zip. The main thing working with the PU is to think about the sewing foot. Right. So I used a Teflon or an Ultra Glide, or you yeah. can put some masking tape on. Um, and then it's thinking about twirling it before you get into this lovely PU, make up a version, test the fit, because this marks, so you really want to make sure that you're oh, going so you, for so it. Oh, so you don't want to be unpicking. doing, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, now what date did you say that was? March the 10th. March the 10th, March 10th. Uh, enjoying your show, and CL must be proud of her lovely creations. Can <laughs> I ask, please, is the pleather stretchy? No. It's got a teeny bit of stretch, but it's not a stretch pleather. So you wouldn't want to use it for a pattern that requires stretch. No. But it's got a it's little... It's got a little bit of give, look. Yeah. But it's not stretchy, is it? No. And it's only one way. It's only that yeah, way, yeah. isn't it? It's not up the straight of the grain. Good question, though. Hang on, we just have <laughs> picture taken. We have a picture from Tracy. Uh, not a picture, a question from Tracy. Uh, and then I'll let you I do your same demonstration. Uh, nothing's come through, though. Ah. Oh. Hello, John and Claire Louise. Loving your book. Oh, is there any special paper that I can get to trace the pattern piece? Now, that really is a proper question. It's not me suddenly going to go, oh, I've got this paper. Um, what's the best way? How would you trace through? How would you, from the pattern in your book, mm -hmm. how would you trace it through then onto other? So you lay out your pattern sheets from the, the book. Oh, hang on, I'll go and get it, yeah. Now, I've got some open, John. Oh, have you? I've got this one still open. <laughs> yeah. No, I've got the, pa the oh, okay, tracing okay. paper. Oh, OK, OK. So, I, so you, wet, you put out these first, do you? Yeah. They, obviously, these all come with the book. You get five sheets of these with the book. So the one thing that we uh, need to do is just work out which bit we're tracing, because they overlap. Yes. So I often use a highlighter, just right, to kind okay. of... Or I'll tick the middle, just so I don't get confused. How do you know... Because they're, they're, I know they're on the top of the sheet, what's on there, but how yeah. would you know how many... Because it'd be awful if you traced off the pattern pieces and then when you came to sew it, you suddenly thought, oh, I haven't done a facing. Is mm. it, does it tell you? Yeah. So what we have here for all the projects is what's called a lay plan. And a lay plan... They're just coming in now. There you go. A lay plan shows you all the pattern bits, so you could count them and number them, that's yes. what I do. Yeah. Um, and then you know whether you've done everything. Because, because there's nothing worse than that when you get to sit down to sew and you think, well, wh where's the facing or where's the cuff or something like that. So this way, you know how many pieces you're yeah. looking for. And that's particularly important with this project, I'd say, because there are quite a lot of pieces and some of them all look a bit similar right. and they've got funny angles like the yoke. So it'd be really easy for somebody to sew the yoke back to front, for example. No, not that you've ever done that. No, 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 no I've never done that. Like that. We won't talk about the kimono. <laughs> um, how many metres of PU does the jacket need for the largest size? The largest please? size, I think it's 2.5. Um, I'll just have a little look. Are you all right? Do you need to borrow my glasses? I've got glasses on, <laughs> cheeky monkey. <laughs> no, it's for me. Oh, look, look at this, look. Ooh. It's because one, Ali sent them for me, because one was too short, she sent me two, you see. But she says, I think she thinks I need to wash them now to make them less sticky out, <laughs> Right. Do you know what that reminds me of? Put them back on. Uh, Hannah's boyfriend? No, no. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dan's question was, how many metres does she need yeah, for the sorry. largest size, Can please? Sorry, pay attention. Yeah. So, um, in the book, it tells you in terms of hides, because this is designed for a leather project. Right. And oh, hides right, are different because you buy by the square metre. So I would say when I cut this out, two and a half metres would more than cover it. For the biggest size? Yeah. Because it is 60 inches wide, It's isn't so, it, so wide. And because all of the pieces are quite small, you could kind of intersect them and... Now, with PU, do you still need to do... You know straight grain when you do on cotton? Things like yeah, that. you do. 
You still have to, you, you can't sort of go, oh, it's picked. Because on leather, yeah, you stick, can put them yeah. whichever way, can't you? But on PU, you still have to follow your straighter grain bit. Unfortunately, because it's got the viscose on the back and that's got a, a weft and a warp thread, yeah. you do need to follow the grain. So um, just make sure you cut everything running up and down. You can kind of slot it either way. There's no directionality. Oh, so, so you, could, you, could, you don't have to cut everything going no. that way. You can do it upside down, but as long as the grain is there. Exactly. So um, it's just making sure that you're using the straighter grain. Because as you just saw, there is no stretch on the straight. Yes. And there's a teeny bit on the cross grain. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So I hope that answered your question, Diane. Right. So going back to this yep. one, so you've got your pattern here. How do you trace off your pattern pieces? So we find ourselves a nice handy bit of tracing paper. Squared pattern paper, they call it here. And this comes, I believe you've got kind of five sheets in there. It's pretty good value. Three, three sheets in this okay. one. Um, so some have got five, some have got three. The, 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 the squared one has got three in it. This one that I've got has got three in it. So just because I've got short arms, I'm going to need to bring okay. this a bit closer. Just mess up this is this below. Now... I'm going to bring it a bit closer. All oh, right. Because it's quite a dense paper. Yes. Um, we, do, we do do two versions, I have to you? say. We do this, this one, which has got the crosses on which is the one I make my final patterns out yeah. of. Um, I'm watching you struggle there. I don't know if we've got the other one in... Have we got the other one in Scott that's not squared? Um, only because that's slightly finer. Because okay. most pattern papers are finer. finer. What, what it is, is this is top quality, yeah. like this. It's the same. It's, it's, a proper, it's a pattern paper. A pattern paper. Whereas we do have a tracing paper okay. as well. But there's another way to do it. Oh, there is. So if you want a finer one to put over the top and just trace it around, you can do. Or... Um, and I haven't got one with me. Maybe we can make Chris look. You can answer a tracing wheel. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I do it. Okay. So if you have a thicker paper and you can't trace like you would do, you know, when you're at school and you yeah. trace diagrams and stuff, um, then what I would do is lay it on top and then go around the shape of my pattern with a tracing wheel. Which is exactly what I would yeah. do. Have... Do you use a carbon, a piece of carbon paper? Not for my patterns. Oh. But I do if I'm doing it into cap. I do you it see, sometimes on the paper because sometimes it doesn't quite oh, mark. Okay, we've we've got that. We've got chalk copy paper and we've got the tracing. So now this is where you have to be careful, which is where the people, little Paul and Hannah, sometimes get confused about it, because <laughs> only because they call it tracing paper and they call this tracing paper. There's one tracing paper which is like your old-fashioned carbon paper, which is what you use with your with your um, tracing, tracing wheel, wheel, and it makes little coloured dots on the page. They call that dressmaking tracing paper here in the shop. And, if, and or you can use chalk copy. If you want to go for the chalk copy, which has got the yellow, the turquoise, and the different pink in there and white in there and everything. Um, but the, the paper to actually trace this over, they just call it tracing paper. Like the, this one, pattern tracing paper, they call it tracing paper. So please look, check the picture. A quick question from Elaine. Uh, would it be a good idea to trace the largest size, cut your toile, and then fit the size? Oh, <laughs> That's difficult, isn't it? It is. So what I would say for a jacket, for the top half of the body, you need to be looking at the bust area because that's what's going to define your size. So if you just pick the biggest bust area, but the rest of you is not that size, you're going to have to recut necklines, recut armholes. So I would take a bust measurement and then compare it to my high bust, because it may be that you need to do some bust adjustments, but your frame or your shoulders are small. Yeah. So don't always just say, oh, I'll cut it big and chop it down, because you might be giving yourself a lot more work later. And also the proportions, when they're graded up, the proportions might be wrong. So what yeah. will happen is, if you're, say, you're, say you are, you're a size 14, I'm going by shop size, but you're size 14, and you think, oh, I'm gonna make the 18, and then I'll make it smaller. What happens is, is on the pattern, the waist for the size 14 will be here, but the waist for the 18 could be mm. down, could be further down here. So then when you come to fit it, it's a completely different shape. It's like if you're petite and you buy a regular pair of trousers or a regular dress, the waist is never in the right place, the yeah. hips are never in the right place. So if you're gonna go bigger, I'd only go a size bigger. I wouldn't ever go, so if you're if two by 12, whatever, I'd sometimes go to a 14 maybe, but I wouldn't go any bigger than that because, because all, everything's going to be out there. Like your shoulder, because on a size 18, mm. a shoulder will be much longer than it is and on a size 12 sort of thing. So you've got to be really, really careful. The you? one thing I find, so for me as a dressmaker, I would 
have to cut a very big size to fit my bust, but my shoulders are quite narrow yes. and I'm, I've got a petite frame. So then it's just massive. And I end up with like neck holes that, you know, yes. come all the way out here. So I do something called a full bust adjustment. Yes. And you can easily find lots Which of Which we on want that. you to come and do. Lots of ladies have asked. No, 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 because they've asked me to do it. You're better than me, so you can do it. <laughs> or we can do it together. Yeah, we, we can do it together. Do it together. Next time you come to a show, Part of one of these should be doing a full yeah. bust adjustment because it's easy when you know how to do it, yeah. but looking at it and, and not necessarily even to draw your own pattern. If you get a pattern and we yeah. can show you how to make it fuller in the bust, because a lot of ladies have that issue. You don't fit the, the traditional bust size because no, no, no. we're all so different. Yeah, we're all we? different. And there's no way that someone can design a pattern that's going to fit, fit all everybody. the millions of types of bodies no. out there. So um, even as a pattern cutter, I still use commercial patterns and alter them because that's still quicker for me than drafting from scratch. Well, it depends what the, what the job is, isn't it? If you're yeah, making a whole... Yeah, for myself. No, no, no. But if you, say, you, say you were asked to do all the costumes for the leading lady in Les Miserables, you would make, I don't know why I've chosen that, but you would make a basic, you would draw up a base block because you know every single dress yeah. that you make for her yeah. is going to come from that block. If you were just asked to make one dress for a singer who's doing a, a night, a Queen's birthday party, say, next week or whatever, you'd then get, you'd buy a pattern and think, oh, she's got a bigger bust, I'll do a bust adjustment. You wouldn't, because it takes so long technically-wise yeah. to draw a basic block. I think, if I would say I was doing, I've done some community theatre and I had to make, like, 50 circle skirts yeah. and rather than drafting I did use a pattern but for most actors I would normally draft yes. from scratch but for myself I most of my patterns that I make clothes from are, are from, the... commercial patterns okay so that one would straight away right yeah. so we need that's how to trace it off we've answered that one uh, the, the, the top stitching we yeah need to so the, the, the thing is with this um, fabric is you can't iron it same as leather yeah so um, particularly on a PU what I found is that it doesn't really you can kind of use a roller but it doesn't really ha squash it flat. So the best way to make the seams look nice and not too bouncy is to top stitch. But sometimes that just look, even if the fabric's not bouncy, yeah. sometimes, if you're using denim, Oh yeah, it and this gorgeous. would be great in denim. Yeah, You've exactly. got some denim, haven't you? Um, I think oh, we, we sold out some. of the denim yeah, but yesterday, get, you, but we get, we get it get in all the time. Denim. The eight ounce denim, if you're gonna make this in denim, buy the eight ounce denim. Yeah, right. and I'm thinking about making a little version, you know, this kind of trans season thing in a ponty, just so I've kind of got a cardi that doesn't look like I've got my dress. So you like on. a Prada, uh, uh, other designs are available. Other de <laughs> but like a, like a Prada, like a scoop, you can make that a scuba or a yeah. ponty. Um, and yeah, put a little yeah. red stack. For, anyway, let's get on to okay. it. So this is, if you want, if you want to do um, top stitching on a jacket like this and one thread doesn't look enough. Yeah. One thing, and you don't want to have to go to the shop and buy, because you can buy extra thick top stitching yeah. thread, but you might not, you might do it in one project, then not do it again. You don't want to spend all that money. Exactly. So a brilliant for, uh, for bag making, because sometimes mm. it looks really lovely to have top stitching. So you're going to show us how to create a top stitch look without having to go out and buy the special yeah. top stitch cotton thread. Yeah. Right. So this is a top stitch and on a, on a jacket, to be honest, anything where you're using a top stitch, it kind of needs to be a thicker thread. Yes. Because it, otherwise it kind of looks a bit pinched. Well, also it can sink in. It can sort of sink in, can't mm. it? And, and it looks cheap. That's what, it doesn't yeah. look like a professional no, finish. No, no. It looks like it'll just sink in. It looks homemade. And what we want it to look like is handmade. Exactly. So if you could just pass me that yellow thread. Oh, it's so, Hannah's favorite color. Mm, so this was um, an example, say this was a denim. Yes. You often have these kind of odd yellow colors. Yes. And I probably, each pair of jeans, I'm not going to use a tame top stitch, so I'd buy this kind of stuff. So right. um, if you can see, I've put the... We'll just come around the back. Yeah. Extra spool pin on. Hang on, just coming around to the back. There you yeah. go, there you go, there you go. So um, with most machines, you'll get an extra spool pin. And yes. this one, this foxed me for a bit because it doesn't look like most of them. And I was like, oh, it's No, amazing. normally it's just a straight Yeah, straight it's normally thing, just a little uh, shank. And I was like, oh. So um, you pop that on there. And you put one reel of thread on there. Right. And then we're going to put the second reel of thread onto here. Right. So our regular one. Now, sometimes I don't even buy two reels of thread if it's a really unusual colour. I fill another bobbin and I use that on my oh, okay. spool okay. pin. So um, we're just going to slide. But today you're going to use, because we've got two threads, you yeah. can use two threads. And but... I think it, it's less confusing yeah. if I show you with yeah. the two threads. And then we are, oops, I'm just going to 
Well, it's brand new. You haven't even taken the uh, end out yet. No. Did you know the top end comes off? What? <laughs> I only found this out about three months ago. <laughs> so you take that off and you could store your needles in there. How long have you been doing that? <laughs> For years. No. <laughs> So it's designed so you can always put your catch back in so it doesn't yes, yes, unravel in yeah. your boxes. Now, Hannah said it came up on her Facebook page. Oh, really? Oh, obviously you buy lots of sewing things. OK, so now, right. and there are different, um, different schools of thought on this, and I know that you... I've talked about this before, haven't I, with twin needling. Um, I just thread the two as one. Oh, OK. Um, now, I've never threaded this machine before. Now, so be I can help you if you get stuck. Do you, you don't, you don't, you don't, um, what's the stuff that we've got thread magic? It's like a beeswax, but you put it through on thread for sewing oh. machines. You don't bother with that then? I, no, I use beeswax when I'm hand sewing, but yes. I've never done it on machines. But that's what I said when I came here. And then we had this, um, it's, it's called thread magic, isn't it? And we had one, first of all, for hand stitching. And I was like, oh, this is like the modern version of my beeswax. Yeah. Then we sold one that went on the sewing machine and you literally, put a little square one, you put it on there and your thread oh, goes wow. through it as you're stitching. So um, we've got, oh no, I don't need, I'm not doing a twin needle. I was just about to tell you about twin needles. No. So um, then if I do want to use two threads, I might find it so, easier. So you just threaded the machine as yeah. normal, but taking both threads through at the same yeah. time. And then I'm going to, this is the only tricky bit. So it's a good idea to use a top stitch needle. Right. Because the eye is slightly yes. thicker to accommodate a thicker thread. So yeah. um, if I can't get this threaded, then John's going to do it. No, we've got this, except I can never do it. But we can well, get Chris the, in. I with the two Chris threads, in. I wouldn't. So. Oh, you wouldn't use the thingy with it? Yeah. Because <laughs> just weaking us. I, no, I'm just sort of like going yeah. like a cowboy yeah. so that I can get down and see what I'm doing. So, uh, cool, blimey. Top stitch needles there, £4.25. You're right. Yeah. Look at the face you pull. <laughs> you don't do the tonguey outy. You do the do. Lip, lip sucking inny. I well, what I tend to do. I've got lipstick on, so I'm not going to do it today. But what I tend to do is I kind of suck the top lip, okay. and uh, I call it tech week lips. <laughs> when, oh, <you're>, yeah. <laughs> when you're tired and you end up getting like really blistered lips. Tech week in the theatre is when you've made all your costumes, you've done all your fittings, you're all ready to go, and then you have a whole week where you run through the show, it's not normally a whole week, but you run through the show so they get the lighting right, they can get which door everyone's coming through right, because it's the first time the actor's been on the set, but it's also the first time anyone's seen the costumes properly, apart from the costume parade. So you spend a whole week doing that, and dress rehearsals, it's when you suddenly realise, oh, we can't get that quick change done in 18 seconds and things like that. So it's a whole week of very, very long hours of sitting in a yeah. very dark theatre. Yeah, doing the same bit over and over. And over and over again, yeah. So you don't run the um, whole play, they, they do like each section at one at a time. So I did use the needle threader because I put a small eyed top stitch needle in and okay. I just wasn't, we would have been here for the whole two hours. So now I've got like my, the equivalent of my top stitch. Yeah. And then if you want to, um, there's lots of tricks for doing top stitch. Um, my personal favourite is I kind of measure how far I want it over to be. And then I'm going to find, because I can't use my seam guides here because, because you've got your I'm covering sleeve, them. Yes. Um, and I'm going to have to use my right hand underneath to make sure my seam stays flat. And what I do is I line up my needle where I've measured that pin. Yeah. And then I just find something to focus on. So whatever you find that's easy. I think you guys do um, a stitch in the ditch foot. Sometimes people like to use yes, that. So okay. whatever works um, for you. And then just keep your finger holding this flat. And I tend to always, because obviously I haven't put an ultra glide foot on. No. Um, <laughs> so anything could happen, basically. Yeah. Just go. And um, another thing for top stitching is we want to make sure that we've got a long stitch, otherwise it will look really pinched. And in real leather, it's going to um, actually make the fabric rip. Just bear with me, computerised machine. Yeah. I'm, I'm an old lady. Oh, no, you're, it's normally you use, that's, uh, you've not used this machine, have you? <laughs> no. So why have you jumped to this machine today? Well, no, because it was in prep. 
It was in the prep area. Yeah. And um, I like playing with I new things. I, I, when I did my show, <laughs> this made my twirls for me. I love it as a machine. But um, yes, because normally you, you choose one of the more... I use a mechanical, yes. more basic one. I'm a basic kind of a girl. The thing is, I'm just used to not having to use fancy things. Yes. Um, and so today I fancy being fancy. Well, uh, uh, Joe and uh, Lucy, two of our experts, after being here, who've sewn for you yeah. longer than we have, um, <laughs> making them sound ever so old now, <laughs> but they both bought one of these each because they, they absolutely adore the 680. Yeah, yeah I, ha I have got a computerised machine, but it's my semi industrial for costume work, and yeah. it's, it, it doesn't come out that often in my studio because I take it on jobs. So as you can see, so now you're just stitching a normal stitch, yeah. but you're, you're doing two threads together on the top. And if you look, that looks pretty much like a top stitch, doesn't yeah. it? So it's a really nice little trick. And if you were into doing um, decorative stitching, so I've done it where I mix two different colours and then that will give you a nice little texture. Oh, lovely. Put a little bit of glitter in there. Of course. <laughs> um, quick question. Somebody's yeah. asked why, you look, why do you keep looking underneath? I'm making sure that my seam is flat because I couldn't press this. Yes. There's a chance. Yes, because if it's a cotton, yeah. you've pressed it yeah. to within an inch of its life, so it stays there. But so this I'm using my hands to kind of feel that it's all nice and flat, and I'm just double checking. Brilliant. Yeah. And then. Do we need to sew the other side? No, 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 because no, we need to. Um, I, know, I know we've got plenty of time, but we've got loads of things to get through, so. Uh... I mean, I think that looks pretty nice. Isn't it a brilliant tip? Because if you're not going to do top stitching all the time, why? And also, every time you do it, you're going to have to buy a different colour exactly. and everything, aren't you? Whereas this way, you can use the thread that you will either, have, you know, kind of have got in your stash or that you're using to actually create the garment with and just double it up. That's fantastic. So the bobbing fat thread still catches it, yeah, but it's yeah. catching two at a time yeah. rather than one at a time. You do some... I always do a little test, because sometimes you might have to mess about a bit with the tension. I mean, not, not very often. And just make sure that the thread underneath is the same brand. Yes. Oh, right. Oh, that's important. Yeah, really and, important. And also, top stitching needle, because the hole in a top stitching needle is normally bigger for you to get the thread yeah. through. And is it slightly more sturdy normal as well? It's slightly more sturdy, but it also tends to be more like a jeans needle, where it's slightly more... Because it's designed for going through lots of fabric, it's got a kind of really sharp tip. Yes, yeah. So it will puncture. Puncture through. Uh, uh, you just had the one that was in the machine, did you? You didn't have the packet of them? No. Nope. Um, I did have the packet, but... And that's uh... in the prep area as well. <laughs> oh, you're rubbish at this, you are. Right, get the book. Let's move on to the next project in the book. OK. Because well, we've should... got to get to, got to, get to oh. the frock, haven't we? Right. Yeah. Now... Uh, we will be going for a break at the normal time and we'll come back because last time we went over but this okay. time we can just stop yeah. and pick up where we took off. So we've got another um, three or four minutes have I got, Michael? Five minutes, we're fine. Oh. got another five minutes before we go for a break. So um, then through this chapter we've also got the next version of this. Now I really like this jacket. Um, with the tweed, mixing the PU and the tweed. Yes. So that's, something... that's the same jacket then, is yeah, it? Yeah, exactly So you've the done same. the yoke, yeah. the shoulder yoke. At... Oh, yeah, so now the yoke yeah. is only a shoulder yoke. It doesn't yeah. go all the way around the back, no. does it? It's just a shoulder yoke, and then there's a line on the pattern that says, if you want to make this version, where to cut. Um, and I think that's a nice way to mix fabrics if you don't want to, like... If you're a bit scared of using the PU, you can have a bit of a practice on the nice, easy oh, yes, ones. Oh, yes, yes, exactly. Um, and again, it's just a nice casual jacket that you could wear with all kinds of different things. Then oh, we no, have... don't flick past her boyfriend. She's been Sorry, waiting all Hannah. hour for that. <gasps> now, is that the same man in the cargo yeah, shorts from earlier? and yeah. in the T-shirt. Okay. So this was a challenge on the show. And I, I'm, I haven't seen anyone make the kilt. OK, now, was it made like... Is there 13 metres of fabric in there? Because in a traditional kilt, you have 13 metres of fabric. The whole nine yards. The whole nine yards. That's where the expression comes from. Is it? Yeah. OK. Um, I didn't know either until... No, because I did Rob Roy and I had to learn all about it. It's yeah. really going back a few years now, but... Yeah, that's... I thought it was more than nine yards. Anyway. Anyway. Um, yeah, but, yeah. That <laughs> the, the... That's why I say the whole 13 metres, you see, <laughs> same thing. These were done traditionally, so all of the pleats around the back, you can't really see that in that shot, but in this oh, one... Oh, they are, they are done as... They're all done. Yeah. So, um... Claudia actually told me, because it took them about four hours just to do the pleating, and she was like, thanks for that. 
Oh, you weren't there on the day? <laughs> no, I was there. She was oh. like, yeah, thanks for that. Uh, because she kept coming on set and going, what are they doing? What are they doing? Oh, they're still pleating. Still pleating, yeah. What are they doing? But that's the whole, that's the whole essence that's of the whole kilt, thing. And it? also what was really important about this challenge and the reason why we chose a kilt is because there's structure inside. So there's a kind of like a canvas that holds everything together. But you really have to understand the property of wool. Yes. And it's going to move on. Let it set. Only because I wore, uh, when I do the um, bridal awards every year, and, what, and they always dress me. One year they dressed me in a, a kilt, a wedding outfit, a kilt. And I thought, well, do you know what? I'll go like the Scottish people go. And I didn't, you know. It's boiling hot wearing a kilt. <laughs> it's absolutely boiling. But what I did also forgot is that I was on a stage and everybody else was down there having Oops. their dinner. So I'm doing the awards thinking, if I move from behind this lectern, everybody's going to be put off their dinner for good, you know. You did have undercrackers on, didn't No, you? that's what I'm saying. I did it the whole Scottish... <gasps> anyway, let's move on to the frock. So this is, like, my favourite dress ever. Um, so this is a slightly different version of it. Right. Which is what I did on my first show. Now, a lot of people are mentioning about the dress that you wore when you did this the first time, because that was your twirl dress, yeah. wasn't it? Was that this...? That was this hack. Right. Oh, yeah. yes, because this is a hack, because the this original one... Has a pleat has, across it. Yeah, doesn't it? it's got this little pleat here, and so this was something that a few people said, "Oh, the pleat doesn't suit me." And after watching uh, my show from last week, maybe the pleat doesn't suit me. I'll be quiet. <laughs> but anyway, it's, and it also makes it more of a spring-like thing because it's not quite so yeah. heavy. So just here. in case you don't know, the the, the the other the one in the pattern, it's not this one, but it has this. The, it has a drape around here, it and it and it. Well, this seam line where the pockets are. Yeah. This. Four Forms the pleat up yes. here. Yes, so, so, so you have an extra yeah. layer, whereas this way it's much a, a much simpler version and it's a hack of the design and the, the pattern that's in the book. Yeah, and so um, it's a really nice dress. I've got a couple of these. I've got four of these. Okay. So basically designed a wardrobe for um, me. What we're going to do is in a minute we're going to go for a break, but I'll go through all the Ponty Romas that you can make this out of after, after the break. Okay. And then there's another hack version in here. Which is the one you were wearing when yeah. I first met you. In fact, it was, was it that actual it one? It was that actual one. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the slouchy cardi, um, which I think Deborah's made. And then we've got my hack of this, which is the kimono. This was on... March the 30th. Oh, look, you remembered all your dates. 30th of March. I've got a strange memory, John. Yeah. Never tell me you don't anything you don't want me to remember. Oh, no, I, I remember <laughs> weird things yeah. rather than the important things. My mum used to say, well, if you could you remember all the exam things. Anyway, there's the kimono. Um, and it uh, looks complicated, but it's not. It's not. But no. so what's different between that one and the one in the, the book? The main difference between this is the first one is stretchy. Right. And it's got shoulder pleats and it just has a soft edge. And this one has a fixed band going around and it's made from a woven fabric. So it hangs slightly differently. Brilliant. You could also make it with a stretch and put the band on. Yes. Um, so that was, uh, did that fabric come in back in? It, no, uh, I think I've got it tomorrow, the day after. I don't know if it's that one. I've got some That's of them lovely. arrived. So I've got it straight on. Um, uh, right, now I've only got a minute to okay. this one. There are more projects in the book, lots oh. more. Oh, hang on. So if you want to get into sewing stretch, but you don't want to make a dress, yes. classic T-shirt. Hannah does, says she wants to, as long as he comes around to try it on. <laughs> you know that kilt? Could you make yeah. it for a lady if you wanted to? Yeah. There would just be a bit more pleating between the hips and yeah. a bit more shaping. OK. Right, I'm going to stop there because I just want to show you this. I will come back with Ponty Rome, but I need to give you a stock warning about the rose gold um, PU. Is that right? Right, more than half the stock has been not just put in baskets, it's been checked out. More than half the stock of that's gone already. Um, so please be careful about that one. Right, don't go anywhere. Go and get yourselves a quick cup of tea because we will be carrying on talking about Ponty Romans, talking about crepes, talking about... Oh, we've got a lot to fit in the next hour. <laughs> so don't go anywhere. See, I, it's because I'm just enjoying it, chatting. <laughs> we need to concentrate in the next hour. We will see you in three minutes from now. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Hello, my name's Jess Emmettel and these are my three top tips. My first top tip is number one, iron as you go. Always press 
because you will never regret it, but you always will if you don't. Top tip number two, use small stitches. The smaller the stitches, the stronger the join in your fabric. Tip number three, it's only fabric. If you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. Start again or change your direction. Simply Sewing is a magazine for dressmakers and home sewists who are passionate about fabrics and love to sew with stylish patterns. Each issue is packed with technical know-how, templates and easy to follow instructions to sew yourself quick wardrobe updates, accessories, plushy toys, gifts, bags and more. Plus, each issue comes with a free dress pattern from our expanding trend-led collection. We're proudly flying the flag for contemporary sewing with stylish patterns and beautiful photography to inspire sewists across the globe at every level. The Sewing Quarter website is simple and easy to use. You can view a live broadcast of the show on our homepage. Get instant access to our online shop, which has a wide range of wonderful products for you to choose from. You can also enjoy a selection of projects and guides which we have on offer to help you enhance your skills and gain valuable tips. Watch the live shows and you can buy the product which is currently being shown on air. You can even message the studio to ask our presenters or team any questions you might have. Below, you'll find all the products from today's show for you to look at and purchase. On the right of the screen, next to today's products, you will find our simple program guide listing all upcoming shows. So, join us today at sewingquarter.com. On Wednesday, the 25th of April, we're sending you Hexy Kisses, as Lucy Brennan will be creating the prettiest Hexy quilt by Jen Kingwell. This sweet quilt is created out of diamond and hexagonal shapes coming together to give the illusion of delicate cross kisses. The quilt contrasts dotty fabric with a selection of floral and stylish patterns, perfect for adding a subtle splash of colour to your room. So join us on Wednesday the 25th of April at 9am, where Lucy will be demonstrating the Hexy Kisses quilt. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678. While TL pre preps up the trousers that we're going to show you next, I just want to uh, show you this uh, dress in the book again. Now, this is, the, we were just talking about the original dress that CL then did a hack on, because this is the one with the pleat on it. Let me show you. It's got variant, look, if you see here. Oh, can you see that there? Yeah, there you go. It's got the pleat, the line where the pocket is, follows on round and becomes a pleat up there. And your pattern pieces are, are quite odd looking. I mean, it's brilliantly explained in the book, but if you, this is the one that you can either make like that or do the hack that um, CL mentioned. Uh, we looked at the hack on the 10th of uh, April. Um, now, this one here, this dress here, how brilliant is this, right? This is the one CL was wearing when I, the very first day I met her, which was, well, now I remember because, um, what date was it? It was in London. We were on a, a to, in a top floor, uh, shishi little uh, um, bar, cafe place, weren't we? And it was, must have been January the 31st. Anyway, uh, I've got some Ponty Romas if you want to make that frock out of here. And the reason I was pointing that out, it's not the same stripe that CL was wearing, but I've got stripes, I've got spots, I've got a dog tooth and everything like that. So I've put them all on here because the table's full of the PUs and that table's full of CL. So we'll just go through them on, on here. It's like the, when we first started, we used these right at the beginning, didn't we? So I'll start here, if that's right, plain black. Plain black. Now, this is Ponty Roma. If you want to have a look at what it's made of, go to the website, because the whole composition is on the website. It's 60 inches wide, it's stretchy, it's a two-way stretch, and it's £3.99 for half a metre, remember. So that's the plain black. Then here, I've got an ivory background with a black spot. Now, I've, I'm only faltering, because we do do it in navy blue as well, and the navy blue is incredibly dark. But anyway, that's a black spot there. So it's an ivory background with the black spot. Oh, is it? It's a navy spot, man. That's why I was asking. It's a navy spot. You see, 
I tell you what, this, this happened yesterday. Hannah answers with such conviction. Yes, 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 it's that one, it's that one. And then after she goes, oh, now I do apologise. You know, when I said black, I meant blue. This is the blue one. No, you see, it is very, very dark. The thing is, you could easily mix the black and the blue together if you wanted to. OK, so that's that one. Then next to that, I've got the cream with the dark stripe. Graphics coming in. That's a navy stripe. You can see that that's a navy stripe, can't you? That's a navy stripe there. Ivory navy. Then on the next row down, I've got the hound's tooth, dog tooth check one in the black and the white. You see, you could mix and match all these fabrics as much as you wanted, couldn't you? Because they're all the same consistency, all the same weight, all the same width and everything like that. So you can mix and match as much as you want. 3 99 for half me. They call it dog tooth ponty roma there. Then let's move along to this one then, which is the ivory spot on black. No, it is definitely black. It's definitely black. Definitely black. Then I'll move along here because I've got black and ivory stripe next to it. This one's the black and ivory stripe there. Poor old Hannah's upstairs searching through it. There you go. Right, now the one underneath it is the same fabric but in navy blue. That's how you can see how close they are in colour, can't you? So this one's navy blue. I know, there's black there, there's navy blue there. 3 99 love it in the navy blue. And then last but not least, a grey one. A mild grey, beautiful. And this, now, this is the one that Deborah, when Deborah was on, Deborah Sim was on, she used that dark grey, didn't she, to do the distress? Because in... It, This is the mild grey Ponty Roma, though, isn't it? This is uh, this, and also in the book there is a three-hour slouch cardi that goes with the dress, which looks look gorgeous in that as well. Three ninety-nine. Okay, are we ready to go and do a trouser roundup? Yeah. Right. Don't need that. Don't need that. Right. Okay. Yes. So, what are you going to show us now? Well. One of the things that people find the trickiest yeah. with trousers... I'm just looking for the pattern, now you're gone. ..is a zipper fly. So I think we sold out of that, or you sold out I've got of four. I've got four. So it sold out, I sold out on the day. What it'll be is either four people didn't check out or four people... OK. So this one is a fit pattern. Yeah, it's not just a fit pattern, but it's designed to assist you and teach you about fitting, okay. which is great because it's a really basic trouser, tapered leg trouser, classic. Um, you can make it in all kinds of fabric. It's you know great for work, great for going out if you want to make it in a crepe. Mm -hmm. And there are lots and lots of fitting instructions in there. Uh, we made, uh, well, we didn't. CL made it on the 16th. So if you want to have a look, 16th of this month, if you want to have a look to making it, I'll just show, before you do anything, I'll just show you. This one, this pattern is worth buying if you're going to make trousers because, hang on, let's see which, which one am I opening the right one. It's got, here we go, it's got so many techniques to learn how to do. If there's something wrong or there's something not quite right or something's too long, something's too short, it gives you the problem and how to resolve it. That comes in the pattern. The pattern goes from a size 8 to 24. 8 to 24. Okay, right, I'll let you get on. So okay. what are you going to show us on this one? Then? Well, I thought I would show you. This is called a mock fly. Right. So it's not a proper fly because it doesn't have um, the extension underneath. It doesn't oh, have a yes. shield. And so that, but I, I was wondering, because when you said I'm doing a mock, when we did this, yeah. you said I've done a mock fly. We didn't talk about it no. on the day, and I was like... No, that's a proper fly. No, I'm not so going to say it's anything. called a mock fly. But actually, unless you've got a metal zip, you don't really have to have the shield. Oh, okay. it, the shield is kind of there so that you don't 
catch your skin with the metal all teeth. men's all men's trousers yeah. will have the shield behind yeah. i was going to go all men's trousers and show you but i won't <laughs> yeah let's no, not we'll let, let's not go there um so this is a slightly easier version if you've never put in a fly so right. and then the next time you do it you'll understand the whole kind of construction and it's it's nicely explained in the uh instructions so um you can see don't, you can't see the zip at all when it's done up. We could put any colour zip in. So one thing I wanted to show you. Yeah. A uh, lot of people think you have to get exactly the right length zip. So let's say you're like me. We're getting zip on the roll. Zip <laughs> Aren't we, Hannah? <laughs> Hannah, request, ha, ha, Hannah requested oh. it, well, requested, <laughs> shouted across the office the other oh. day, going, see how said the zips on a roll and we can have zips <laughs> on a roll. And they were like, and they were like completely confused by it. So Hannah had to explain to it, oh. then I had to re-explain yeah, it to them. Gonna but, get it. Um, but anyway. So this zip is too long for this project, yeah. but it doesn't mean that I can't make these trousers because it's a plastic zip, I can shorten it. Right. Um, now, there are lots of different ways of shortening zips. And if this was a metal zip, I may, shorten it from the top because I don't want to sew over the metal, metal teeth. Thing, yeah. But because it's a plastic one, all I've done is stitched across there. Oh, that's a stitch line. I thought it was a yeah. felt pen line, yeah. No, it's a bit of chalk underneath where okay. I measured it. Right. Um, and there's actually, I've got the pattern piece here. There's actually, um, on the pattern, there are a few symbols that we need to look at. So this is where we're going to stitch our zip two, yes. and then this is going to be the decorative fly stitching. So all I have to do now is chop it off. Okay, um, if you're watching the other day, we did make a toile of calico out for these before before try it on. Um, I, I'll just, but, but um, we, we haven't got the toile here because we chopped it up at the <laughs> end of the last show. Um, if pattern. you want calico, sorry to interrupt, if you want calico, I've got calico, is that what you're saying, Hannah? Got calico, if you want to do calico twirls, one nine. Now, thousands of units of this have flown out this week. I'm down to my last. Now, it's going to sound a lot. I think it's 250, isn't it? But we're selling it by the thousand mm. at the moment. So please, please, please be careful. Yeah, the last show we did together, we sold over a thousand. Wow. So just please be careful. I've got 250 units of that left. Right, so make the twelve. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 there was a uh, lady asked a question. Was it Linda? Oh, Lydia? Did, she, yeah. did Linda have a question? She, I saw Teresa's comment saying, <laughs> I can't get that, that thought of you going commando out of my mind. <laughs> Linda asked what day we did the V-neck dress. March the 10th. March the 10th. Okay. So I'm just going to, shall we set those to one side? Yeah. So we've got our um, pattern piece here for the front. The, the pattern for these has sold out now, but for yeah. those of you who've bought it in the past, I've got other trouser patterns coming up, yeah, which I'll get out for you. Yeah, and quite a few of them have got a mock fly on them. So you can put a mock fly onto any pattern you like, really. That's you, keep, you keep going. Okay. So the first thing I've done is I've measured my zip. So that it, it's, oh, the, has it got it on the pattern, what size zip you need? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. So it's got it in your notions at the back, but yeah. it's also got a mark because you need to stop stitching on that spot. Right. So if this was a metal ended zip, it would have to stop exactly there. Right. Perfect. All right. And then can you see that I've got a line here that's your stitching line? So a little trick that I used to do when I was a trouser maker. Right. Not that I got bored or anything. No. Um, I made a little cardboard shape that I would use as a template. Oh, OK. And then I would mark it out with iron off wax chalk and then I wouldn't have to do any basting or okay. tacking. But then you were making hundreds of pairs of trousers. Not hundreds, because it was tailoring room, but I, okay. that's all I was allowed to make as a junior. Oh, OK. Trousers. My friend Lynn, since we left college, that's all she's done. She, in North London, she designs and makes, tw not twirls, but like the samples of yeah. trousers for like Dorothy Perkins and yeah. all that sort of thing. And she literally, for her whole career, we left college in 03. Um, <laughs> she's done trousers since then. Yeah, when I'm 39, and now I'm 39, it's a long time. <laughs> anyway. OK, so we've got um, what can be a bit confusing. So this isn't the way that it's done in production. So no. for fashion, it's not nothing like this. So we've got two fold lines. We've got our centre front. Right. And then we've got the fold line, which is underneath. Right. OK. And I've got a sample, so I'm going to show you oh, what okay, goes where. OK, so I don't need to show you on no, this. No, no. That's fine. OK. Um, and so one thing to think about with this is left and right. So if you are making ladies' trousers, it goes right over left, because ladies are always right. Oh, God. 
<laughs> Sorry, I couldn't So mine goes that. left over right because? See, it doesn't work. No, but we only need to say left over right for men, right over left for women, because right, we're always right. right. So um, I often will just mark my pieces, like I've done on this little sample, with left and right, because when they're inside out, it's very easy to get confused. Right. Yeah? So this is sort of this section. Now, one thing that I've done differently than the sewing pattern is I do my inside leg before I finish off my crotch seam. Right. So I've left a little opening here, which is just slightly different. Yes. So if we look here, you can see where I've started marking that. Yeah, can see that. So we've got that line there. Yeah. Now, there's nothing wrong with putting a thread based or a tack or, or however you like to do it. Yeah. And um, then on this side, can you see I've already pressed this fold line? Right. And that's where we're going to start sewing the zip and it's all tucked away. Yeah? Right. So I've got a notch that helps me line that up. Um, so that one's been folded under on... The left side. Yes. So this is the left half of the body and this is the right uh, half And of it the says body. on the pattern, fold line for left, left side, side there. Yeah. So you know exactly on this side where you're going to fold the fabric. Yeah. And then on that side, you've marked that line. Yeah. And it's going to naturally fold. Well, I've got a notch up here. OK. So I know that I'm folding it on that notch. Because that's the centre front, is yeah. it? Yeah, and then it goes to that stitch. Now, I don't want to put a hard crease on this just yet. No. Oh, we may need an iron. I'll put it on. OK. So the first step is we're going to take our zip. And there are lots and lots of different ways of doing zip flies. This is mm -hmm. just one. And then we're going to slide it in. So the, the zip um, pull should be 1.5 below the top. Now, this is, again, slightly different than they've done in the sewing pattern. A lot of the American sewing patterns tell you to put in a much longer zip. Right. And then lop it off here. OK. Technical term. <laughs> Which I might do for a meta one. Right. Um, but it's got that, that little stopper helps it Yes, yeah, so exactly. I, I like to do it um, the other way around, yeah. bottom down. Yeah. So is it okay if I rotate this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just because I might not be able to sew upside down. So um, on the back, I have that little mark that I made where I need to stop sewing. Yeah. And so you can. Oh, I've got pins on my wrist. You've got pins on your wrist. You don't need that one as well. <laughs> it's because I'm not used to wearing it this way. Um, I would suggest with this crepe that you uh, tack this. Right. Yeah. Because? Because the crepe moves. This is a really sheer um, zip. Uh, you know, you don't want this to kind of not be a nice sew. Yeah? Yeah. I'm Ooh. just going to do, you know, a few pins. And can you see that the teeth, the fold is right next to the teeth? Yeah? Sometimes, if this was a costume, I would start off by stitching my zip tape inside this flap. Right. Because then I've got like a security row of stitching. But this is the one that we really need. Lots of you asking about the fabric. It's just here. Um, it's the saf Sapphire Stretch Samba Crepe, 6 99 for half a metre. OK. Now, I'm going to use some of this. Oh, no, it. I wondered why this yeah. was on your list. So the reason why I've asked for this today yes. is because the pattern instructions tell you to do all of this yeah. rather than pinning it with this tape. Yeah, I'm listening. But I prefer to use pins, but I am going to show you how you can use it. So yes. you could have done this with just the tape, yeah? So, um, but we're going to use it in a second, yeah? This is it in the packet here. Wash away quilter's tape for a dressmaker. I know, cr cr crossing boundaries. Ooh. So when I start doing this, the reason why the pattern instructions tell you to put the zip pull up there is so it's not in the way. I just like to move it around. I think lopping it off isn't. Yes. Yeah. So I, I've kept the yellow thread on. So hopefully I'm going to have to just pop that off for a sec. So hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Yeah. And I want to get quite close to my, um, the edge of my fold. OK? Mm -hmm. So 
I've got the zipper foot on and I'm using the left hand side. Have you still got double thread or are you taking your, have you remember to take your other thread out? Yeah, I've taken the other one out. Oh, good. It's oh, just really? that it's... Oh, yeah, <laughs> take another one out. Take... I am. <laughs> it's still yellow, that's yeah, all. Yeah, that's fine. So what I'm doing here is I'm just holding on to my tails. Because there's a little bit of stretch in this samba crepe, I'm just giving myself a bit of purchase. Um, and this is why I probably should have basted it. Because can you see it's kind of wiggling yeah. a little bit? So I'm just going to use my scissors. We haven't used the quilter tape yet, Hannah. And I'm going to take my stitch up. So in a second, I am going to just ignore my dodgy bit of stitching okay. here. Yeah, because I wanted to do this quite quickly. So this is where we could have used a wonder tape. I'm just going to drop my needle and bring my zipper up back out of the way and then I can carry on. So I apologise if I'm blocking, but I need to use my fingers like yeah, pins. Yeah, we we're taking it from the other side there. Yeah. And don't worry, this row of stitching is hidden well away, so we're not going to see it. So we're going to come all the way down. Would you use uh, any different kind of needle for the uh, stretch crepe? Um, no, I just used a regular needle. This, I mean, I've got the top stitch one in here, but um, regular needle. It's not stretchy enough to need a stretch needle. Yeah. If you find that you get any skipping or problems, just swap to a Microtex. Oh, computer says no. It's because you went too fast. Was it? No, it's because you start pressing your thing before it's finished the one before. <laughs> OK, so I've gotten down to... To the line. The yeah. line, and then I'm just going to do a bit of back stitching. So you don't go beyond, you don't go beyond the no. line? No. Right. Um, you can, there's also on that machine, you can just press a, a, lock, a lock stitch. stitch if you want to. And oh. you can press the thread cut off. I know, I know, but... Um... Oh, don't, uh, when I was doing that, <laughs> I kept going, everyone saying to me, why are you cutting it? Why are you back stitching? Because you just kind of... Yeah, the lock stitch. Yeah. So that's one half. Now, I, I had a bit of a bump there because... Uh, oh. <clears throat> that pin that I showed you, I forgot to take out. Yeah. But okay. essentially... Yeah. We'll just gloss over yeah, that that's fine. There. Um, so that's one half of the zip done. Right. So this... And obviously, you'd have stitched this in the same colour as your sapphire. Yeah. So you're not going to see it anyway, no. even if you do have a bit of a blip. Yeah. yeah. And I, I've only stitched it in the yellow so that everyone can see yeah. what I was doing. So the next stage is where we might want to put a bit more of a firm press on this fold. I've so, got some uh, people are worried that they, they, the pattern sold out. I've got another pattern here. Mark, are you just going to press that yeah. down? If you just press that, press that down. This pattern's got a zip in it. Hasn't it? You, could do, you could do the same. Yeah, it's exactly the same process. Same technique. In, now, don't let this pattern confuse you because I went into the, and I was like, this is the wrong pattern. This is not a trouser pattern. It is a trouser pattern. Um, but you also get a skirt. And the top, like a capture wardrobe, it's Hannah's capture wardrobe, a little top, <laughs> a little skirt, and the pair of trousers. What threw me is they didn't they didn't do a drawing of the trousers. That's what threw me. You, you see. have to look at the back, don't you? Yeah. That, it threw me a bit as well. So oh sorry, so I've got it in two different sizes. Yeah, that's the large one there. Uh, now they go by, let's have a look. Uh, it says 26, 28, 30 and 32. Is that waist? That must be waist measurement, is it? Or women's? That's women's sizes. So those are, that's on, this is Oh, the this is the one that comes range. in three. This yeah. is the one that comes in three sizes. I'm sorry, we're a bit dis, dis, dis what's it today, discombobulated. So this is dress size 26 to 32. Then I've also got dress size 18 to 24. And there's another one which I haven't got. I think it might be sold out. It's not, oh, it's sold out. How do you know these things? Because I went on the website to have a look. So the smaller size is sold out. So this is 18 to 24. I haven't got one smaller, I'm afraid. But then I had to cut the 18 to fit Rhea, who's, you know, so it's definitely not your high street size. No. Yeah. Oh, crikey, yes. Yeah? So, so check so... the measurements on the back of the packet. Hannah's been talking to the photographer as well about having all the patterns taken with pictures with the flap over. Right. I'm just tapping this because this crepe responds well, a little bit like wool. I need it to cool down before I move it or I lose my um, press. So when, uh, because I haven't brought my clapper with me, yes. I just tap it until it's cold. Yet, yeah. And then I can move this back over. 
Now, um, one thing I didn't do was neaten the raw edges, but you would do that before you put the zip in. Yes. So and how would you suggest doing that? A zigzag, zigzag or an overlock or something like that? You could, on this crate, particularly on the waistband, I might use a binding. Okay. Yeah. So I've now got my zip in. Right, one side. And um, again, I didn't do this in my prep, but I should have done. On the real pair, I used a little bit of lightweight interfacing. Oh, okay. On uh, both sides, just to stabilise it. But this. the lightweight, you don't want it too heavy, because you don't no, want, no, no, want no, your no. fly to be sticking out. It's like it? probably the super lightweight. Yeah. So here, we want on to line this up with our centre front notch on this half. Now, I would pin this, and when I was tailoring, I might hand tack it. Yes. But this is where you might want to try this. Right. Um, so let's see how this works, because I haven't done this. Oh, no. I have done it a long time ago, but um, it's just basically like lingerie tape, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I was about to say, I was about to say what I know. we got on That's it. why I yes. said. Uh, you know when celebrities wear dresses, Amanda Holden wears a dress like that, right? It doesn't move. You put something on it they call mm, tape. <laughs> you get like, a, like, you get... Uh, no, I'm not going to say that. No, 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 the you're not going to say The birds in the garden, it. you get them in blue and you get... Um, anyway, and they, that's what they call it. We call it, also call it toupee tape. When you work in theatre, we call yeah. it toupee tape. And it's just a sticky... It, it sticks to... But it, it's double-sided tape, but that one doesn't wash away. This one washes away. OK, right. so um, I'm just going to peel that back so yeah. I've got the glue. Right. And then I can get myself lined up. So it's important before I do this to... put put the pull up, get that lined up, and it holds it in place without, because sometimes on a fabric like this, the, the, the pins can make it bumpy, yes, or exactly. the tacking can make it bumpy, and that's going to hold so it. So it's a bit like using the glue pen, but not the yeah. glue pen, really, isn't it? So it's taking it in pl holding it in place now. Exactly, so that's in there. Then I need to turn this over. So it's starting to look like a fly. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not going to stitch this half. So this is what's called the fly facing. This is what we're going to see. I'm not going to stitch it straight through to the outside yet. I need to stitch it here first. So, so the zip is attached. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to flip that to one side. And again, if you wanted to, you could put your stabilizing tape. Um, I'm just going to slide this out of the way for a sec for when we get started. Stiff that one. Get your pencil on it. I'm going to pencil. Rub a pencil on it. Oh, I don't know if that does that work. That works on metal zips. It, it work yeah, on I don't think it zips? works okay. on the the plastic one. So I'm just um, pinning down here, ready to go to the machine. And again, I'll be stopping at the same point on this side. Yeah. So again, a binding on that edge would be kind of nice. Same as the waistband, and. Um, Nice, simple row. So this is holding the zip tape to the facing, but it's not um, going through to the no, outside. But nobody sees that, so nobody sees no. this line of stitching because no. it's just sewing the zip to the, 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 the kind of seam allowance behind, yeah. isn't it? You wouldn't want to go straight for top stitching. There's too many layers oh, no. and too much movability. Um, yeah, that's a technical term. So then I'm just going to... Lift this up. Oh, this is where you've got a stiff zip, so you've got to pull the zip. Well, oh, I'll just shut up. I'll just go <laughs> at home. Trying to be helpful. And I'm just going to carry on down here. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Oh, what? I just pressed that fold, didn't I? Yeah, shouldn't you have done. I put iron on chalk. Oh. <laughs> Fine. OK. We don't sell iron on, iron on chalk. Iron off chalk, you yeah. mean? Yeah, iron off chalk. Yeah. I've got a little bit left. Yeah. Um, so that's that stage. And the next stage is this bit. <laughs> that's a, so what you've used, to draw that line from the pattern, you've used chalk the irons off. Yeah, it's, right? a, it's but, a tailor's. But what I, yes, exactly. We, have, we don't sell it, but... You could have tacked that line in exactly. or, or, yeah. to make the line. I think what they recommend you do in the pattern... What are you doing with my little box? I'm using it to store my things in. OK, you. 
The box is gorgeous. It's I'll lovely. Do, you carry on doing uh, that. So, um, away from the fly edge, the centre front edge, is one inch. So, depending on whether you've been super precise with your stitching, you can kind of come back and mark this in place. The thing is, you could always just mark it in the chalk anyway. Because yeah. You can get rid of the chalk. But the thing about the... Um, Iron chalk is it really gets rid of it, whereas this you give, give it a good brush. So right. what they tell you to do in the pattern instructions is to put masking tape here to give you a straight line. Okay. And the, I'm not going to put masking tape, even though it's a low tack tape, on this crepe. No. This is too nice fabric. So, um, and then it's sort of creating that shape. So I'm not really good at drawing that shape, which is why I always used to have, have a template. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what they call them in the industry. There's a special name for it. Cardboard template. No, it's, it's called a jig or something, I can't remember. The CL Kellogg's <laughs> No, I didn't box. invent it. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we do want to pop some pins on. What are you doing with my box? I'm going to sell it. <laughs> I love these, because we have, we have this one in the blue and in the taupe as well. The taupe one was bigger than this one. Look at this lovely box, right? The gorgeous box. Now, I need to tell you that this, this tab is suede. It is new buck, so it is leather. So if you don't like, only because we've had uh, guests on the show who don't yeah, like yeah. to use leather, and I, I think it's important to tell you. Yeah. Um, so that is suede there. But then this lovely, isn't it gorgeous? That box, and, and these come out here like this. Oh, do they? Yeah. That'd be nice in the bathroom. I mean, it doesn't have to just be sewing storage, the whole box. What are you going to put in it in the bathroom? Your lush bauble thing. My little makeup y bits oh. and the cotton balls. Oh, now you're not going to be able to get. Aren't they stopping making cotton tips? Yeah, Q tips. Are they going to make cardboard in the middle? I've got to do something like straws, aren't they? Anyway. A bit topical watching the news about cotton tips. I'm amazed at how many billion cotton tips we use in the, in the UK That's in a year. Nice, isn't it? It's frightening. Anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to see which is needle centre. Okay. You um, shouldn't put anything in your ear that's smaller than your elbow. <laughs> that's what they say. Are you all right there? Yeah. So you've, all you've done is if you've now moved the, the needle ne yeah. to the centre. Now, if you get by the 680, the um, zipper foot has a indent on one side, indent on the other, so you move it. It also has an indent in the middle, so you can move your, the, your um, needle to the middle as well. But you, do you need, still need your zipper foot in here? Well, I kind of do, because I've got this lumpy bit right. here. And sometimes, if I don't want to make my stitching wonky, it's a good idea to slide this down. So that's why I kept the pull yeah. up. So I'll slide down a little bit and then slide it back up. OK. Um, so I'm using the centre because it's more stable, and yeah. I, that's the only reason I need the zipper foot, otherwise I go for a straight foot. So we're gonna just um, start sewing. And again, you'll do yours in a... Matching. Matching thread, yeah. not a bright yellow ochre thread on a blue pair of trousers. Well, you could do them, you could if you wanted to. It's up to you. Not on this lovely crepe. I wouldn't do a contrast. You'd want it to match like my, um, the Your real originals. ones. This is just so you can see where we're stitching because the thread was such a good match. So again, I would suggest this is worth tacking because you can see how it kind of moves. Yes. But also if you've put your super light interfacing inside, yeah. it won't move as much, will it? No, so I've made my life harder by not putting the same things in. Yeah. Do as I say, not as I do. Exactly. <laughs> OK, so round here is where it's important with this line that we do sort of follow it because we've got the zip stop down there right. and you don't want to break your needle, especially if you do this with a um, metal zip. Yeah. I'm going to ask Elna to move that... Um press a foot on that machine because it's at the back and we can't when we oh, see it's not there it's in the way has this got a knee lift yes mind you you like... wouldn't be able to reach from there <laughs> <laughs> That'd be what fun. are you saying so you've already gone like this today <laughs> okay and then I like to do a little bit of, um, that's all that the pattern tells you to do. Yeah. So if this was a sort of denim or a jean, you might want to do two rows of stitching. But just at the base, 
if you look, so I'm just going to do two or three stitches and I'm manually cranking, walking yeah. that just to make sure that I get it in the right spot. So it's like a little triangle. So rather than... Oh, so like at the, like at the top of a bag handle. Yeah. So if I do a bar tack, especially on a, a, a sort of dress fabric like this, it's going to get all clumpy and it's not going to be nice. So I just do a little kind of triangle. You can do a bar tack. And then I'm doing this nice and slowly. I might have my concentrating face on because... Oh, okay. We can't um, see your face behind that thing, so <laughs> yeah. you're fine. Um, I don't want to overshoot. Also, I see you brought proper shoes today. <laughs> Last week. <laughs> In the rush. See, I forgot to bring her posh shoes. She's had her running shoes on. And she's oh, do you think anyone noticed? Anyone on the still? Her feet are behind the I graphics know. the whole time. So well she's got old trains on. <laughs> so um, my, my leggings that I wear here, so the mic's got something to hang on, I was supposed to have for yoga. So I hadn't taken them back to my studio. So I went last night in my pyjamas. Oh, OK. <laughs> because that's the only sample I could find. Could you answer that? <laughs> no. There we go. So um, I've got a little bit of a bump here which is just where I hadn't okay, back Okay, so in it. real life, if you get a bump like that, what would you do? In real life, what I would do is I would break my stitching here and sew it from the opposite side and kind of press that out. So that is because I didn't baste it and I yes, didn't yeah. interface it. Yeah. But essentially, that's it. So that's this, that's just, that's this here? Yeah. And then that's the little triangle at the bottom there. Let's see, I was just talking, you can really see it in the yellow. You can't see it so much on the, um, on on the, the originals blue. there. And then because I have got wax in there, can I just scoot around here? Yeah. What are you saying, Hannah? Yeah, so, so, so if you watch the um, show from the other day, we, we, uh, what we did, well, what CL did was she made them in calico on 16th. 16th, yeah, April. Monday. Um, she made the calico ones, first of all, to see the shape and the size, and then obviously these were the, were the, the crepe ones. But that pattern sold out, but we also did. I'll let you finish that. And then... So um, just one thing, if you do buy this crepe, yeah. Yeah, I didn't put my pressing clasp on this. It does mark. So you need to use... So when I made the real pair, I always do a press test first. I found that it marked. Um, I mean, this is just a sample, but you can see. So you want to be careful with this. Anything on the outside, use a press cloth. And when we say press cloth, we don't mean your Teflon one. We mean your, like, tea towel, muslin. Yeah, or yeah. You, you can use a Teflon oh, one. Could you use yeah. a Teflon one there? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. there no go. reason why not. I mean, I tend to use whatever I've got lying about, but... <laughs> and then... She smashes the <laughs> illusion of whatever, doesn't she? Uh, so this fabric is the sapphire stretch cape. Go on, what are you going then, then do? So this quilter's tape, yeah. actually, I want to get rid of it now. Right. So I'm just opening it up. And because of the sort of crepey nature of this fabric, it's got a bit of a surface texture, it just comes out. Oh, but you can't, I mean, it's wash it. So yeah. if you've got another fabric, you can wash it away. Yeah, but... if I'd used it to anchor my zip, I would have to wait until I washed them. Yes. But because I only used it in that area, so that held that really nice and stable, so it didn't And it hasn't left the stain, because it was exactly... Because if you use masking something, sometimes it does use yeah. a little, little bit of tack, doesn't it? The other pair of trousers we made on the day were these. What time is it? I'll say something. These don't have a zip in them at all. These don't have a zip in them at all. These were elasticated waist. And you can either make them as a, um, a palazzo pant or you can make it as these ones are made with the wrap across the front. Let me just get that one out there. So they come, they come in two sizes, 16 to 26. And then we also did the extra small to the medium as well, which is that one. Four to 14. Just stroking. Do you rewatch the show though? Because it was a two hour special we did on the, uh, on the trouser feature on that day. Okay, and these are the finished trousers. And you can see, you can either make them just as no, a straightforward wide leg pants, like that with an elasticated waist. Oh, there you go, picture. Or you can make them like that with the drape going across the front. The red linen, which I haven't got today. Should I have it? 
The red thing, you keep looking on the trousers on the table. No. OK. The red linen is 3 99 for um, half a metre. It's a lovely weight. Now, if you aren't just going to make the palazzo pants out of them, it is quite... It's not sheer, but if you're wearing spotty pants, we're going to yeah, be able to no see Yeah, no spotty them. pants. No spotty pants. But it's not, it's not like a, a muslin. It's not like a gauze. I'm not saying you're going to see everything through it, but you would see if you put a bright spot behind that, you would see it. Three ninety nine. Do you want to do the other two? No, I haven't got them. It also comes in two other colours. Oh, we're going to get them for you. I saw someone at King's Cross yesterday in almost this trouser. Right. But you know the kimono fabric? Yes. They were made out of a floral with this sort of a drape. Oh, lovely. Oh, they look gorgeous. Did you take a picture of her as well? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there they are. There they are. There they are. Thank you. Oh, brilliant. These are the linens for this. Um, that's the red one you've seen. It also comes in the navy. Yes, yes, yes. It's a bit chaotic today. I do <laughs> apologise, everybody. Is it my fault? Yes. Yeah. Blame it. Sorry. Well, it never happens normally. Uh, then we've got beige. I've spoken to Jules. <laughs> Yesterday was even more <laughs> chaos yesterday. So I'm blaming both of them. Um, beige, which is a lovely biscuit colour. Now, all that width, 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 width. It was really wide, wasn't it? Oh, yes, that's right. There you go. That's half a metre. That's what you get for your 3 99 What's that, say, Helen? 53 inches wide. And it also comes in... Oh, you've done the... Oh, no, we've done the navy, have we? And the beige. Then, this is a completely different fabric now. It's still linen. It's still linen. But it's called mushroom. But it's much, it's a, like a kind of heavier open Ooh, weave, isn't it? It's, it's got nice. a totally different Oh, now, hand. now you were saying about the lady with the floral. This is not like a bright floral, but that, they, these would look lovely yeah. in this, wouldn't they? Do we not have this on your day? Do we not have I that? I think we did, but we were... We didn't give you the option. I wasn't allowed to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> this one's 5 99 for half a metre. It's 140 centimetres. It's got a more open weave and it's got a heavier weight and it's got a more drapeability than the red and the... Mm. Don't you think? It's a bit softer as well. The dressing yes. isn't quite as... No, that's what I said, yeah. They, they, it feels like these need to be washed. Mm. Not you won't get the same as that, but to get that drapeability. Uh, it's called Mushroom Floral and it's 5 99 Nice, look at that. <sighs> right. Are there, is there anything else we need to talk about with trousers yeah. before so we, we go on? we had a couple on. of questions. Uh, we, well, we had a few questions, didn't we, about the fit that yes. we did. So, is um, this the smile and the The smile frown. and the frowns. <laughs> right. Um, so I've got the, the 12 pieces that we cut up. Right, which is the calico. This is for um, Anna Sewing Nut, who uh, um, didn't quite get to this on, on the show the other day. This is where, on a trouser, if you've got... I haven't got a, a model to show you, but if you've got, you know, at the crotch seam there, you get the you get the um, frown or you get the smile pulls. Just at yeah, the, at it's the, like wrinkles. Yeah, this so, just just how quickly you can. Um... So this is uh, it was doing that. So I had a bit of a frown. So I started off with a smile. Yes. And then we released the hip. Yes. Well, we took that in a little bit, and then it kind of turned into a frown. And so you're kind of looking at this. Obviously, I don't want to sew a dart in this place. But what this is telling me, and do you remember I said I had a hot spot yes, here? Yes, on the thigh, yeah. So I don't want to take a dart or even bring this in by that amount because then I'm making it tighter. So what it's telling me is that I need to give enough space here in the thigh. And because the wrinkle was pointing in this direction, that's where I need to adjust, not on the outside. Right. So, so when you're on the smiley one, you adjust it on that side. Do we do well, that? Well, no, I had a little, they look too full here anyway. Yeah. So I kind of do a, sh a basic shape and then see what happens. Okay. Rather than diving in for the wrinkles and then. Yeah. So what this is telling me is that, well, the, the hot spot here, the tightness, that this crotch isn't long enough. Oh, yes, yes, yeah? yes, yes, yes. And it's, we haven't got quite enough width across the thigh, and that's what's causing this. But I might want to take a little measure of how much I've got there. And um, can, take I, can I have the box? Oh. Because I put my, put my tools in there. 
all, all three of your tools. <laughs> Two of your tools, because that's not a tool, is it, really? No. I well, I couldn't fit my felt marker. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to put a little bit of chalk either side of the pin. Yeah. So this is a little bit of trial and error, because where I need to take that, so we'd kind of measure that. It's about half an inch. OK, I could give you a tape measure if you wanted. <laughs> yeah, we could have a tape measure. I was trained using my, my fingers yes, and my thumbs. Well, we, and, yes, yeah. we're all our thumbs are different sizes. So if you say to people at home, oh, take your thumb width out. I know, but do you know that that bit is always the same? It's on, an inch, isn't it? Yeah, it's always an inch. This bit here, from here from to the, here. From there to the sort of mid joint. On everyone, yeah. Yeah. And it's the same as this. This is your height. From here to here is, it? is your height. Oh. So um, yeah. I'm going to just take a little measure across here. And it is a centimetre, which is a half an inch. Okay. Um, so I might want to lengthen this by a half an inch. And I just want to give myself a little bit of a whisker. So I would on, take some of my pattern paper and extend this corner out half an inch and a long half an inch. Does that make sense? So what? So, so if this is your Let's sewing go. line here, you take your... Got a bit of paper, haven't we? We had some... We did have. Chris has tied it up. Have he? No, he's tied it up. I'm off... Oh, no, here, here, here. Hey! OK. No, no, the, the, the ones from here have gone. Oh, the, the proper ones. Right. So I would lay my pattern paper underneath. Diane from Lancashire says, I'm loving the show. I'm learning so much, even though I'm already a dressmaker. Love, oh, Diane. Oh, thanks, Diane. Oh. <laughs> so I would then oh, essentially... We'll do this, and then we'll talk about CL's top. Then I would bring this out by a half an inch. Yes. So I'm sort of extending my crotch line. Yeah. Now, remember, this is without seam allowance. Yeah. And then I would wiggle this line back down here. Yeah or true it. Now, the other thing that this is telling me is that maybe there's a bit of tightness here. So I'm also, around this area, going to scoop out a bit more. Even though it's tight? But it's tight there. Right. It's not really tight there. OK. Because I've scooped that, and now that's become longer, longer, but it's also standing further away from the body. Right. So start by doing little alterations. Maybe I would split the difference and not go quite as much, but I've given it more length, so it's got more space to move up, and it's got more space here. Right. And got then it, got you'd, it, you'd want to kind of refit because that. Because in your brain, you'd think, oh, it's too tight there, I need to add more yeah. to it, but that's actually going to make it worse. Yeah. You need to make the curve slightly bigger, and as you say, you've given it there, and that's now longer, so it's going to move across. Yeah. So that's the frown. That's that the, frown. the frown. Okay. Well, it's the same principle with frowns or smiles. You kind of think about it normally points to the area that needs looking at, and then you kind of, that's what's great about the pattern. It's got lots of little instructions yeah. saying do this, do that. But this is also what's good about making a calico toile. Exactly. Because you can do all of this, re sew it. Yeah. And when, you, when I do a calico toile, I leave big seam allowances because on this, you could almost, if you need to let it out, that half an inch is going to fit into the seam allowance. You could almost just let it out and see how it works yeah. from there. And what this also, I didn't have frowns at the back, did I? No. So I'm only going to do this on the front seam. So it was the side of the body that had the issue. Yes. Yeah? Perfect. So if you wanted, we could talk about a full bottom. Go on then. Oh, yes, should we do that now? Yeah. My ladies from Birmingham messaged in, so, who um, they basically said they said they've got an S shape here. What did you call it, more? And were you Junk to say in the that? Trunk. Well, she said it. She <laughs> said it, not me. But, no, but it's it's. Um, I think Jennifer Lopez. It's kind of a. It's, so, a, it's a nice expression. Exactly. So what it is, it's ladies whose backs come in here, and then come out onto a yeah. larger. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm making it <laughs> now. I'm making it. No, I'm not I'm making it huge. All right, then I'll do it on mixer. But you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. basically that S shape on the back. It's a prominent abdomen. Oh, hang on, I've got a quick question. Morning, CL, I bought the tapered trouser pattern last week. Isn't the capri pattern in your book more fitted? Love watching and listening to you. Yes, my pattern is more fitted. So if you want a fitted one, just... Yeah, but my pattern doesn't have the fly or the waistband or the pockets. So it's a very, very simple shape. 
Um, Anne bought your, uh, has already bought your sewing bee book and now she's got confidence to, to actually use oh, it. Oh, do not She's done the cami top, like you said, start Great. with the cami top. So right, okay, quickly, because I've got okay, some. Okay, really, really, really quickly. No, no, it's not, no, no, so, you've, got, you've got 10 minutes. Um, I often use one of these when I'm working on patterns. Yeah, we've got a new one so in today. So this would be where, can you see I've got bumpy lines, so I would be smoothing. Yeah and making all my curves with this. Yeah. So it's also got a straight edge here. So yeah. if I want to, it's a little bit like a full bust for the bum. So that again, full bust for the bum. Yeah. It's Lorraine and the gang in Sheldon. Just okay. found out this is. Hi, Lorraine and the gang. So I would start. Hope you're watching again. <laughs> I'd start normally on top of my paper. So I'm going to give myself a few kind of lines and I'm going to, essentially, I need to put fullness here. Yes. Because if I only add it there, that doesn't allow for the curve coming this no. way. So it needs to come out and across. So um, I'm going to take a line across there and then line over here. And I'm also going to take one to the five point. Like so. Okay, so just explain quickly those two lines. That one's from the fullness of the bottom cheek. Is that sort it? of the centre? But if somebody had, so you can, you might have a top hip that's fuller, closer to the middle or to the outside. I've just kind of picked the central point. Okay, which yeah. is the best place to start if you yeah. don't know. So you've got just picked a bit centre point. You've done a line straight up to the waistband, mm -hmm. a line straight across to the crotch seam, and then one down to the bottom. Of the, uh, yeah, that's the, the crotch point. Yeah. So I've taken that down there. And then um, grab, so this is almost identical to a full bust, but it's a full bottom. Yes. And we're going to come up here. And you just leave a tiny little oh, hinge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, but can you see how this is all kind of doing something funny? Yeah. So I might want to cut this line. So the third line is just, if you did that and it lay perfectly, would, could you then leave that line or would you always cut this line as well? You could leave that line. Uh, you may only want to cut this bit. So if, you've, if you think about the curves of your body, yeah. if you've got more curve, for example, on the boob, you need more length. So we need some more length here. And I might even, I'm going to swap this cut line. I might even, instead of cutting there, so it depends whether you want to take this into the centre back or at the side. Yes, because a lot of people, um, I don't want to say saddlebags, but you know, a lot yeah. of ladies do have that issue with saddlebags. So this, is, this would be where you'd want to add yeah. your saddlebag. So um, you're basically slashing and spreading. Yes. Yeah. So if I want to keep this true, then I can move that. Yeah. And I can keep adding in more and more space. Now I know I'm starting to make that odd. Can yes. you see? So I wouldn't want to do that. If I did want this much space, so if this was my um, seat adjustment, so I actually take a measure from the waist to the lower hip and to the top hip and work out where you need that. Mm -hmm. um, I would then, because my crotch seam has gone all kinds of wonky. Yeah. Yeah. So that keeps your crotch seam true yep. by what you've watched sales under if you saw that, instead of opening that bit, you split it and take it back across like yep. that to recreate this straight edge here. So you've taken a little bit away from there, but because you're adding here yeah. and here, here, it doesn't it doesn't matter. But we've raised this here. So I would start the first time you do this, just give yourself like a half an inch here. But if you measure yourself from your waist to your kind of your crotch point, that measurement will give you an idea. Yes, because, how much because if your bottom here. is really sticking out, obviously it'd be a much bigger measurement than if yeah. it's just a little. Um, now, does it matter what happens if the waist of the twelve fitted me perfectly, and we've just added? We've just added. A, we've that. added a little bit. So of then that. we're going to measure that, and we're either going to take it here, or we're going to take it here. You wouldn't uh, take it out of the dart. You wouldn't make the dart any bigger. I could make the dart bigger, but I might also kind of slide that over, that's about the same amount, the waist hasn't changed, and then reshape here. Right. Because yeah. I've added all of that width. Yeah. So it's just a little bit of jiggly yeah. poker. But this is why, again, it's good to do it with, 
with your calico because you're not doing any of this with all your posh fabric. You're doing it no. with, your, with your calico, with your twelve fabric. Now, the next thing, if you have that kind of really S-shaped back, is often you'll find that you get too much fabric between your shoulder blade and your hip, and that can be called a sway back, yes. which is a dressmaker's term, and it doesn't mean that you anatomically have a sway back. Yeah. So, She's covering herself there. Uh, <laughs> She's not a doctor. What I tend to do, it's like a little triangular wedge. So you might need to then reshape the top. You're shortening that point there just to get rid of that sort of ballooning. Yep. And that would be more on a kind of dress. I would start by leaving it all on and then do that little elastic. Do you remember we put the elastic yep. on the waist and then drew the waistline? And also a lot of ladies make trousers who've got the bigger hips and then the waist it's enormous, isn't it? So this, this would... Are you looking at me again? No. <laughs> I'm not looking at you. Um, no, but if this was me, yes. then I wouldn't have slid that over because I need a fuller waist. Right. I also need the opposite of this. Oh, you've got no bottom? I've no... got a flat bum, so I would be taking a wedge out here. Would you do that the same way? Would you split it like that? Would you literally just take a wedge out the middle of it? I'd literally take a wedge and then just measure up and swing out the sides again. So... Mm. I hope that helped everyone. I hope you're all videoing this so you can look back at it later when you need to do it. There's loads of advice online, though, so you yeah. can, like, Google it. Yeah, you could do. Or, you or could... buy the pattern. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, calico. Am I doing a stock warning, then? Right, half it's gone. Half what I had has gone already. And obviously we haven't gone into repeat yet. What happens is now we're on repeat all day long. Of course, the, the um, show carries on going. Right, you can just very quickly... How long have we got? We haven't got long, have we? We've, we've got one minute. OK. So, um, has anyone shown... Have you used the, the bias maker tool? Yes. All right. I did it yesterday, actually, without you. Sorry. You stole my idea. Jules did. <gasps> But we were going to do pipe. Now, next time you come back, we have to do piping. Do you know okay. when you're back next? Yes. <laughs> May the 14th. So you're um, telling me because you're not on with me if you ask not to work with me. Everyone asks not to work with me. No, I've, I've insisted that I only ever <laughs> work with you. <laughs> Is that the you right said answer? that to all of us, yeah. That's right. Answer. Uh, I just want to talk about this. OK, you've got 30 seconds. OK. My favourite bobbin organiser, because I'm a bit klutzy, ask Chris. Everything stays in, but you can still see it. So if you've got, you know what they are, you haven't got a lid to go on. And I've got little hooks in my studio, so they live on the back wall, so my students can always grab them. How fantastic. It's a print bobbin ring. Now, obviously, you don't get the bobbins in it. No. But now this is the one that you can put in boiling hot water. Yeah. And you can make it smaller. Yeah. It's amazing. And, oh, my other favourite tool. Oh, hang on. Show another favourite quickly in her 30 okay. seconds. Oh, I love this. I've got one in my handbag. That? that was not on my list. Anyway. Da -da -da -da. So it's a needle twister, so it looks like a lipstick. Yeah, and... don't get it confused. You get the needles with it? Yeah. But you can oh, put... Oh, you get darning needles yeah, in there. Yeah, you can put any needles in here. So I always end up having to do, like, sewing on the run, so I've always got needles in my handbag, and it's just great. And she's turning it upside down because it's magnetic inside, you see, so if you knock it over, yeah. they don't all fall out of the place, £9.50, and you get the needles in it as well, and you get darning needles. How often do you see darning needles these days? Um, menu? Menu, just stay there now. Menu for tomorrow. I'm back in tomorrow. Yeah, sadly, it's me again for you tomorrow. Coming up tomorrow with me, John Scott. Oh, Amanda Wyatt's in tomorrow. A crepe jacket she's doing at 8 o'clock. Then at 9 o'clock, we're doing, I'll be doing a quilting and bundles galore. And then at 10 o'clock, Amanda's making a bag. And then, oh, what's, what's 11 o'clock? It's me, and I'm doing dressmaking inspiration. I don't know what it is. I, no, I, no, no, and I need to, in my defence, after the show now, we go and do the prep for to, tomorrow, so I'll know in a minute what it is. But I don't know what, oh, Chris will know. What's the Dressmaker's Inspiration show? Must have fabric and patterns. Oh, there you go, then. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> uh, I will get him in again tomorrow. You're in tomorrow, you're in tomorrow, aren't you? We'll get him in again tomorrow, because you all seem to find him eye candy full for some reason, <laughs> but... Thank you so much. Thanks for it's having me. It's been a pleasure, even though you didn't come till later. And oh, you're so even. mean. <laughs> I know. We love it. We do love it when you're here. <laughs> uh, and obviously, you've got another date, but you're not telling us when it is. May the 14th. Oh, there you go. Am I in? I hope so. Well, we'll soon see, won't we? Uh, thank you. Uh, do you know what you're doing yet? 
Are you not allowed to say? I think I'm possibly doing a jacket and a dress. Blimey. I know. Lots. You better go and start cutting it out now then, haven't you? <laughs> How long have I got? Oh, 25 seconds. So thank you very much oh, indeed. Thank you, John. Thank you very much, Smart. Do you remember to... Oh, yeah, don't forget to re-sign up for the mailing list on the website because oh, yeah. uh, I can't force you to do it, but um, if you don't do it, you won't get all the special things coming through and everything like that. Um, I don't really have anything else to say. Dressmaking inspiration. We'll go and think of some stuff. We'll go and think of it now. Uh, thank you, Sochi Company. I'll see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Bye. Throw kisses to the missus as we bring you a brand new stylish jacket pattern, the McCall's Mrs. Jacket. On Sunday, the 22nd of April at 8 a.m., Amanda Wyatt is in the studio sharing her tips and tricks with you to make this wearable and comfy piece in some utterly divine crepe fabrics. This daywear jacket can be tweaked to perfection. Add flared sleeves, extend the jacket to skim you at mid-length or crop it at the hip. From maroons to powder blue, we've put together a selection of linings and crepes to suit your outfit choice. So be sure to watch Amanda's Jacket Making Workshop on Sunday, the 22nd of April at 8am. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 678.